Good evening and welcome to Kinsman Civic Memorial Stadium in Oshawa for the second game of the OCAA Men's 2021 Baseball Championship. And the second game tonight for you, starting in a few moments' time, will be the George Brown Huskies against the Humber Hawks here at Kinsman Stadium. Brian Oliver along with Jacob Ebbs, and uh, we're at, uh, at uh, in Oshawa and uh, looking forward to um, a, a big game here between the two-time defending champion, Humber Hawks. They won this championship in 2018 and 2019. Of course, no season last year. The George Brown Huskies are making their first playoff appearance and are looking to be an upstart here tonight against a very powerful Humber Hawks team that really, uh, from an offensive standpoint, uh, set some incredible numbers this year uh, in, terms of, in terms of offense, in terms of home runs, hitting, and a lot of veteran players. Uh, the Humber Hawks certainly look like one of the teams to beat coming into this tournament. So, Jacob, uh, you look at the, these teams coming in. George Brown had a record of 3-11. and Humber with a record of 11 and three, so they're kind of a mirror image of each other, mm -hmm. and it, the, the the Huskies are going to have their work cut out for them. We think here tonight. Yeah, you know what it really does. Just looking at what's going on in paper, the, uh, the Humber is just an absolute monster when it comes to uh, this season. 350 batting average, 494 on base percentage. Literally half their guys are getting on. Uh, compared to a uh, George Brown Huskies, who are uh, merely batting uh, just a tad below 250 this season as a team, it's uh, it's going to be a, a deep effort for George Brown. But hey, you know what? Anything can happen. It's sudden death, right? That's right, and it is as you mentioned, uh, Jake. It is a sudden death game. The Humber Hawks are in this game tonight because they finished in second place in the OCAA West Division this year, a game behind the St. Clair Saints. So. That requires Humber to play in this sudden death game here tonight. So their season technically is on the line tonight along with the George Brown Huskies. And <clears throat> Humber uh, coming in with an 11-3 and record. They won both games during the regular season against George Brown by scores of 11-1 to and 12-9. to um, Humber winning that first game back on October 1st. And then uh, on October 15th, uh, they had to complete that game that uh, ended after six innings with a score of 12-9 uh, in favor of Humber. They had to complete that game a week ago, uh, a week ago uh, last, well, actually last Friday, I should say, and uh, the Humber Hawks held on for the victory in that game, 12-9. to But uh, Humber this year um, had, a, had, a, had a really strong season. The one blip in their schedule was the fact that they lost a couple of games to the Seneca Sting, and that... Uh, prompted Seneca to finish first place in the OCW East Division, and the Seneca Stinger sitting this one out tonight because uh, they finished in first place and got the number one seed and uh, a bye. But the winner of this game will play the Seneca Sting tomorrow in the uh, Final Four uh, portion of the tournament. So before we get things underway right now, the George Brown Huskies have lined up on the left side on the third base side. The Humber Hawks in the white jerseys are on the right side, and we are going to be acknowledging the OCAA All-Stars this year for the Humber Hawks, and they had four of them. Dalton Brownlee was one of them, a pitcher. Aiden Murphy, veteran, also was a uh, an OCAA All-Star. Along with Dennis DeBanning, who is a fifth-year player for the Humber Hawks and is no stranger to this tournament, uh, Dennis DeBanning had some unbelievable numbers we'll talk about uh, during the course of this game, but uh, really lit up the, 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 the statistics this year, and he was the OCAA's player of the year in addition to being an all-star. And also Stephen Nowrebecki, who was the OCAA batting champion this year with, I think, a 478 average. So Humber on paper, Jake, is, is a powerhouse. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, really, you know what? As uh, as a pitcher myself, this is uh, these are the kind of guys you want to <laughs> make up your roster. Just a team full of offensive power really makes the pitching uh, uh, the responsibility of pitching a hell of a lot easier. The other thing, of course, coming into this game is the Humber Hawks have the, I would say, a little more in the way of experience because they are two-time defending OCAA champions. They won the gold medal here at Kinsman Stadium in 2018, and also again here in 2019, uh, defeating the Durham Lords. 
uh, in in that uh, championship round. So the Humber Hawks are going for a third consecutive OCAA championship in this tournament. But in order to continue their season, they're going to have to win this one tonight against the George Brown Huskies. George, uh, Troy Black is the head coach of the Humber Hawks and is in his third year with the program for the George Brown Huskies, Aaron Weidman is in his fifth year with the Huskies and has led them to the playoffs this year. The George Brown Huskies finished tied for the final playoff spot in the OCAA East with the Centennial Colts, an expansion team this year in the OCAA. They both finished with three wins and 11 losses. But the Huskies get the final playoff berth by virtue of a run differential of plus one in their games against the Centennial Colts. Uh, George Brown uh, beat, uh, won 12 to 10 in one of the games and lost three to two in the other. So the plus one gives the playoff berth to the George Brown Huskies. So for their program, this is a great chance to get some playoff experience and, and, and really try and drive the program forward in a, in, a, in a league that technically or traditionally has been dominated by the Humber Hawks and also the St. Clair Saints, particularly yep. when it comes to getting the gold medals. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, I might, <clears throat> this is, uh, we, don't, we don't really know what George Brown's going to bring to the plate today, but it, uh, it does serve as a good experience for players who are in multiple year uh, programs just to show them, hey, this is what the bright lights are like. And this is, uh, this is what a playoff uh, format looks like. So the Humber Hawks are the home team in this game. They have the higher record and finished second in the uh, West Division this year. Um, so they will play defense. The George Brown Huskies are the visitors. 16 degrees Celsius right now is the game time temperature. The one thing we are keeping an eye on is the weather. Um, there is the potential for some rain uh, during the course of this game. We hope it doesn't happen. We, uh, there was a threat of rain most of the day, but uh, we actually saw the sunshine in the previous game uh, that was played here, the, the sudden death game between the Durham Lords and the Fanshawe Falcons. Durham winning that game 6-4, to four, and the sunshine came out for a while. Of course, it's dark now, but uh, there is some rain to the west, and there, we could see some shower activity before this one is out, but hopefully not because we want to see the best that these players have to offer here at Kinsman Stadium in, in a playoff game. We should, you, know, you always want to have the best potential weather conditions. We're certainly expecting dry conditions tomorrow, but colder weather uh, for sure. So let's set the Humber defense for you right now. Corey Vandergraaf will be the starting pitcher for the Humber Hawks. He'll be caught by Tyrus, ba Tyrus Bath. At first base, Cam Wilcox. OCAA All-Star at second base, number 24, Aiden Murphy. Shortstop is number 12, David Boto. Third base, number 9, Hudson Lockwood. And uh, in the outfield, well, there's an outfield for you. Left field, Dennis DeBanning, OCAA Player of the Year. And left, Stephen Arabecki, the OCAA Batting Champion in center field. And in right field, Robert Champion is the right fielder. The DH tonight in this game is Justin Responti. So... Humber will be looking to uh, be the do try and be the dominant team here, not not leave the door open or try and open the door to uh, to a team. They don't want to be surprised in any way, like now in this. But the George Brown Huskies had some pretty good games down the stretch, mm -hmm. and uh, I think they're not going to go quietly here tonight. No, exactly. I think if uh, you know, head coach for Humber, you you really have to kind of nail into your players that hey, you know what, we've had a damn good season. We have a dang good roster here, top to bottom. We're not going to let give them a chance, and we're not going to kind of expect them just to roll over. They, uh, George Brown, really just wants to play. Uh, they just want to play home record. They want to send uh, Humber home packing. So the George Brown Huskies are in blue, and the leadoff hitter will be Kyle Bandura, right-handed hitter, taking the batter's box now, and you can see him in your screen. Vandergraaf is ready. Here's the first pitch of the ball game, and it's fouled away for strike one. Count is 0-1 to Kyle Bandura. Just underway here. This is a sudden death game between the Humber Hawks and the George Brown Huskies. The winner of this game will face the Seneca Sting tomorrow at 11 o'clock in the final four. 
Vandergraaf's pitch is high for ball one. Bandura is ready, and he fouls that one away, strike two. Looks like he's working in with fastballs here, Jake. Yeah, it looked like I think the second pitch uh, was an off speed, potentially a changeup, just trying to get an early feel for it. But uh, no, if I'm the man on the mound right now, just pump fastballs until you see otherwise. Count as a ball and two strikes to Kyle Bandura. Vandergraaf is ready and will get the swing and miss for strike three. So quickly one away here for the Huskies in the top of the first inning. Brandon Nieva will be the batter. He's the third baseman. Corey Vandergraaf this year, by the way, posted a 3.32 earned run average. Appeared in five games. Only started one of the contests this year. And there's a ball to Nieva for ball one. Good pitch there, just uh, around the letters. I think that probably is just outside the zone, just up. Neva is ready. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss for strike one. Alabama Bayou. <laughs> Huskies looking to get the first base run of the game here. Two Toronto schools battling each other in a sudden death contest. That pitch is in there for strike two. Nieva played in six games this year for the Huskies. Here's the one-two pitch, and that's fouled away. It's a little bit surprising to see your uh, your number two guy only play six games this season. I'm not too sure if that's due to injury or due to potential uh, class conflict. And that can happen. Mm -hmm. It certainly can happen for certainly. players where they can't they can't make every game due to academic commitments. The one-two pitch is low. And it's two balls and two strikes. Just underway here, top of the first inning. George Brown Huskies batting in the top of the first inning against the Humber Hawks. Vandergraaf will step off the rubber, and he's going to chat things over for a moment here. The batter there has been taking a, a little bit of time, so it looks like they're just trying to figure out their signals here. However, with no one on, it's usually just a very simple one finger fastball, two curve, wiggle change. Tyrus Bath is back behind the plate, the catcher for the Humber Hawks. It's a 2 2 count. Vandergraaf is ready. He throws it, swing and a miss for strike three. Two consecutive strikeouts to start the game, just what the doctor ordered for the Hawks. Mm -hmm. So Aiden Colangelo will be the batter now, another right-handed hitter for the George Brown Huskies. Colangelo was the best hitter this year for the Huskies. Batted 439, led the team in hits, runs batted in, walks, on-base percentage, and slugging. And he'll take the first pitch from Vandergraaf as a ball, so it's 1-0. Starting out, it looks like uh, home plate has a very small, uh, home plate umpire has a very small strike zone so far. Here's the 1-0. That ball is on the ground and it's fouled to the right side and it'll be a ball and a strike. Two quick outs here for the Humber Hawks in the top of the first inning, both strikeouts. Count is one ball and one strike to Aiden Colangelo. And he'll take that outside. Two and one. Fourteenth pitch of the inning coming up here for Corey Vandergraaf. Swing and a miss, strike two. The Huskies not able to catch up with that pitch quite yet. Two and two. That pitch is low, so it runs the count full. Oh 
Yeah, you make a good point there, Brian. This, uh, no one has been able, except for uh, this hitter here, has not been able to catch up the fastball. That in mind, you just got to keep uh, powering in. Payoff pitch, swung on and missed for strike three. Three strikeouts to start the game for the Humber Hawks as Corey Vanderha Vandergraaf comes off the field and gets uh, some congratulations from his teammates. The George Brown Huskies unable to score here in the first. We've played half an inning. George Brown nothing and the Humber Hawks coming to bat. So let's take a look at the defense for the George Brown Huskies in this sudden death game against the Humber Hawks. The pitcher will be Michael Guardiero. And Guardiero made six appearances during the regular season. He posted a record of two wins and two losses. So he won. He was the, pit he was the winning pitcher in two of George Brown's three victories this season. 11 strikeouts. Posted an earned run average of 5.79 and started four games. So he gets the uh, the assignment here tonight against a very powerful Humber Hawks team. Here's how the defense looks like for the George Brown Huskies. Again, Guardiero is the pitcher. Daniel Farace is the, uh, is the catcher, number eight. First baseman, Aiden Colangelo. Second base, Gregory Hall. Shortstop, Brady Wagenhofer. Brandon Nieves at third. In the outfield, it's Manuel Rodriguez and left. Kyle Bandura in center and Christian Bakumis in right. And the Humber Hawks will send the first batter of the ball game up in just a moment. Steven, now Rebecca. And here's, here's a tall order for you, Jake. You're only facing the batting champion in the OCAA to start this game. Yeah, you know what? This... Uh I, I don't envy the pitcher on the mound right now. If I was uh, getting the toe in the rubber for something like this, it would just be emphasis on do not leave those curveballs up and make sure you're finishing everything down the zone. Down the zone, you can't really get hurt all that bad. It's when you start missing up that balls might leave the ballpark. So Guardiero is ready. So is now Rebecca. George Brown did not score in the top of the first inning. They went down in order. The first pitch to now Rebecca is a ball. The Huskies will be doing all they can to keep the Hawks off the base pass. And that ball is smacked to center field. And it is off the glove of the center fielder, Kyle Bandura. And now Rebecca is in there with a double. Well hit ball. Carried a bit. And it looked like Bandura had a shot at it, but it went off his glove. And the Hawks are in business to start things off. So here's the second batter of the ball game, and it's Dennis DeBanning, and he was the OCAA Player of the Year. So this is a dangerous, dangerous lineup for the Humber Hawks, and DeBanning comes up with a runner on second and nobody out. Pitch is ripped to left field, and it's a fair ball down the line. That is going to score a run. Now Rebecca comes into the plate, and it's an RBI double from Dennis DeBanning, and it's 1-0 Humber. Well, that was quick. <laughs> what was that? I think three pitches? Yep. Four pitches? Three pitches. And a double, well, back-to-back -back doubles to start the game. Yeah. And now Rebecca and DeBanning doing what they did all season long and, quite frankly, what they've done throughout their entire playing careers. There's an out, and that's a big out for the George Brown Huskies. I think this is, uh, this is exactly what uh, might bite them early on is that kind of maybe not confidence but cockiness just to take one ahead. Trying to go for the throat, and it didn't pay off. So the batter now is Cam Wilcox, first baseman. It's one nothing for the Humber Hawks here in the, in the bottom of the first inning. Back-to-back -back doubles by Stephen Nowrabecki and Dennis DeBanning, but DeBanning just picked off second. Guardiero's pitch is swung on a miss for strike. One and one. Right 
So Guardiero did a good job there, just sort of keeping his composure and just stepping off and making the throw to second to get the tag. Yeah, There's the ball. Exactly. That was uh, that was a really easy one, just kind of stepping off. Didn't look at the banning, and I think that's uh, what kind of sank the banning there. He thought he wasn't even going to look over. Two and one is the count to Ken Wilcox, and that's outside for ball three. Three and one. George Brown Huskies trying to avoid a big inning here for the Humber Hawks. One away, bases are empty at the moment. That ball is fouled. Big cut by Wilcox. The count is full now at three and two. Wilcox from Mississauga will look at ball four. That's a walk, and he will trot down to first base, and that'll bring up another OCAA All-Star this year for the Humber Hawks, Aiden Murphy, the second baseman. Aiden Murphy from Brampton, and lots of experience at the plate here for the Humber Hawks. Yeah, they're really not lacking uh, much in a way of wisdom or experience. Guardiero's pitch is low, ball one. Again, if you just joined us, the Huskies did not score in the top of the first. The Hawks have won here in the bottom of the first. One away and a runner on first. That ball is fouled off hard to the right side, one and one. Aiden Murphy this year batted 372. 16 hits, 20 runs batted in, which are great numbers, but even there were some players on the team that even had better numbers than that. Yeah. That pitch is high, so it's a 2-1 count now to Aiden Murphy. Justin Respanti is the batter on deck for the Hawks, the DH. Cam Wilcox is the runner at first, does not go, pitches in there for a strike, and it's two and two. Just going through their uh, lineup here, I'm only counting four players with a below 300 batting average this season. So truly, no matter where you look, you have a threat. Very deep team, but there <laughs> goes Murphy going down on strikes. That's a big strikeout, two away now, and that'll bring up... Justin Responti. And Responti is uh, the DH tonight, batting fifth in the lineup. Cam Wilcox remains the runner at first base. First strikeout of the ball game for Guardiero, by the way. And that will boost his confidence to strike out an OCAA All-Star the way he did just like that. Mm -hmm. They check the runner at first. Wilcox is back. Aiden Colangelo throws it back to Guardiero on the mound. Respanti will look at that pitch in the dirt. The runner goes down to second. The pitch is there and just in time. He did not slide, but Cam Wilcox makes it. I don't know if he was going with the pitch or if he took off when the ball was in the dirt. I think he took, took off on uh, once he realized the ball got away, but... Uh I don't, I don't think he anticipated a throw coming in. That was very close at second base, but he did get there just in time to beat the tag. Pitch just misses. Guardiero is now down behind 2-0 and oh to Justin Responti. You kind of saw Guardiero motioning to the umpire there of where that ball is missing. It looked like he was saying inside, but a very small strike zone so far. So now it's three balls and no strikes. Humber with one run in here already in the first inning against George Brown. Here's the 3-0. That ball is hammered to right field. The right fielder has misjudged it. Goes over his head and all the way to the warning track. That is going to score a run. And Raspanti is at second with a double. 2-0 Humber. Yeah, that ball was absolutely hammered. So that's the third hit of the ball game for the Hawks. 
and it's quickly 2-0 Humber. Two away and a runner still in scoring position. David Boto is the batter and he swings and misses at strike one. That ball is popped foul. Boato is behind 0-2. The Huskies looking to end this threat here with no more damage than two runs. Boato is ready. Pitch is just a bit high, one and two. You saw him just uh, lean his elbow out there for a quick second and pulled it back realizing, yeah, that's not going to hit me. I'm not going to try for it. Justin Raspanti is the runner at second. Here's the pitch. It's in the dirt. Blocked nicely. And that prevents Raspanti from moving any further. Daniel Faraci making that uh, block. Two balls and two strikes. Boato will take, take a look at ball three. Three balls and two strikes now to the Humber hitter. I'm really not sure if it's a cold or potentially the confidence that uh, is plummeting, but uh, it seems like he's babying the pitch. He's not even, he's aiming instead of throwing it. 3-2 pitch, nowhere near the zone that bounces in. Ball four, second walk of the inning. And the Humber Hawks have another threat going here. Robert Champion will be the batter now, the right fielder. And he's just going to run over. You can see him on your screen running over to talk to his third base coach. The Humber Hawks in the white jerseys. George Brown in the blue jerseys. Two away here in the bottom of the first inning. It is 2-0 Humber. George Brown's catcher, Frache, going out to talk to Guardiero trying to encourage him to work his way out of this one. He's given up three hits and a couple of walks. And that pitch to champion is a strike, 0-1. Looks like that pep talk might have worked. That was, the, uh, that was the best pitch we've seen since uh, probably those back-to-back -back doubles. That one was with authority for sure it there. It really was, yeah. That pitch is high, one and one. Three doubles in this inning for the Humber Hawks. Yeah, as a pitcher, you really got to bear down there. You know what, there's, you got to just give it a benefit of the doubt, say, hey, you know what, you caught barrels, or you want to be a little bit egotistical, so they got lucky, just keep throwing it. That pitch just misses, two balls and one strike to Robert Champion. Justin Raspanti at second base gets his lead. David Boato at, at first base. Pitch is high, three and one. If you're the guy at the plate right now, I don't think uh, I don't even think I take the bat off my shoulders here. Just leave it on there. Other than that first pitch, nothing has been uh, incredibly close. Here's Guardiola's three-one pitch. It is in there for a strike. Three and two. Humberhawks going. Going for the jugular here in the bottom of the first inning. Two runs in already, two runners on, two away. Runners will be on the move on this pitch as well as it's full count. Here it is. It's low. And I think it hit him. And maybe it did hit him. It looks like the umpire made the uh, call that it was a hit by pitch. Same difference. Yeah. That'll move the base runners up and they're loaded. Hudson Lockwood now the batter and a re chance to blow this one open here in the first inning. Sorry, Tyrus Bath is the batter, number 17, the catcher. Tyrus Bath this season only batted a buck 43, so this would be a uh, prime opportunity to put his postseason numbers into the 1,000. Bases loaded two away. Pitch is... Lifted to center field, oh that God. is in trouble. That is gonna drop behind the second baseman. One run is in, two runs are in. Four, nothing, Humber. Well, <laughs> there it goes, the average is 1,000 now. Yeah. 
So that's a two run single for Tyrus Bath. And it is four nothing here in the first inning. The Humber Hawks, 11 and three in the regular season. And very much in control here in the early going. Michael Guardiero was a pitch away from getting out of the inning with only giving up two runs. But that one was just one of those ones that too far for the infielder not, and, and not far enough for the outfield. Yeah, it gets, uh, we call it in uh, more of a non-professional sort of like a duck fart hit there. That wasn't uh, <laughs> really, maybe not one that was deserved, but hey, <clears throat> still counts no matter what, right? You put the ball in play and you force the defense to make a play. Exactly. It's 0-1 to Hudson Lockwood. Third baseman takes a look at strike two. This is a bad around inning so far. This is the ninth hitter for Humber here in the first inning. Four runs are in. They have runners at the corners with two away. It's an 0-2 count to Lockwood. Lockwood batted 4-21 during the regular season. Played in 11 of the games out of 14 for the Humber Hawks. The left-handed batter wearing number nine is ready. He will take that ball high for, a, for ball one. One and two. Hudson Lockwood batting 421 on the season. I'm surprised we haven't seen him uh, give it a hack yet. First year player. Facing a one and two count here, and he fouls that one away. So we'll do it again. A lot of pitches so far in this inning for Guardiero. And not what, uh, not what the Huskies were looking for. No, exactly. The Huskies have an incredibly uh, tall, uh, tall order here. David and Goliath sort of situation. However, I don't think it would go the way of the biblical lore. That pitch hits Lockwood in the back. And with two, with, uh, with the two strikes on him, he will trot down to first base and the bases are loaded. That'll move Bath up to second base. And it's Steven Narabeki who led off this game with a, with, a, with a loud double, later scored. Four nothing Humber, we're in the bottom of the first inning. The bases are loaded with two out. Now Rebecca puts it on the ground to second base. They will throw over to first and the inning is over. But it was a big one for the Humber Hawks. Four runs on a bunch of hits. There was a two hit batters and three left. One inning complete, Humber four, George Brown no score. Gives us a chance to offer congratulations to some of the OCAA award winners uh, this year. The awards announced yesterday. Again, uh, Humber with a lot of the hardware. Dennis DeBanning was the player of the year for the Humber Hawks and was joined uh, with a, another major award for Stephen Nowrebecki, who was the batting champion with, a, with an average of 478 this year. Also capturing... Major awards from the OCAA this year was Pitcher of the Year Cameron O'Reilly of the St. Clair Saints. And the Rookie of the Year was Tyler Chong of the Durham Lords. Coach of the Year, congratulations to Matthew Naylor, the head coach of the Seneca Sting. And the Seneca Sting uh, moving to a first place finish in the OCAA East Division and earning a bye to tomorrow's final four and the Seneca Sting will await the winner of this game between Humber and George Brown. The OCAA All-Stars uh, again for the Humber Hawks, uh, Dalton Brownlee pitcher, uh, Dennis DeBanning, Aiden Murphy and Stephen Nowrebecki. St. Clair pitched uh, made it for four All-Stars, Cameron O'Reilly as mentioned, Henry Rial along with Colin Robinson and Josh Anderson were also OCAA All-Stars. 
two, uh, two, two all-stars for the Fanshawe Falcons, uh, Ferris Adamu and Greg Van Bokel. The Falcons eliminated earlier this evening in a 6-4 loss to the Durham Lords. And Durham Lords get one all-star with Tyler Chong on the list of all-stars this year. So we go to the second inning now, and the George Brown Huskies will come to the plate. It'll be their four, five, and six hitters. And Corey Vandergraaff continues on the mound for the Humber Hawks. Yeah, after that uh, that lo long inning there, I think that inning alone for the bottom half took around 20 minutes. It's uh, It'll be interesting to see how quickly he's able just to dial himself back in. That kind of time off uh, will really kind of cool you down and it'll get you out of your funk. Vandergraaff struck out the side, though, in the first inning. Three strikeouts, all swinging. The batter is Brady Wagenhofer. And he will look at a ball. George Brown, 3-11 and on the season, posting victories over Seneca. As the ball two comes in. They posted vin uh, vic victories over the Seneca Sting, the Lambton Lions and the Centennial Colts for their three wins. They lost both of their games this season to the Humber Hawks. That pitch is in there for a strike. It's two and one now to Wagenhofer. Huskies looking for their first base runner of the game. They are trailing four nothing here in the top of the second inning. That ball is fouled to the right side. Two and two. If you're watching here, the I know the score bug at the moment says two nothing, but it is a, it's a four nothing lead right now for Humber. We'll try and get that updated for you. Two and two, the count to Wagenhofer, and he fouls that away to stay alive. Nothing but strikeouts so far for Corey Vandergraaff. The right-hander is. Ready here with the 2-2 two -two pitch. Here it comes. And that ball is ripped to right. Second baseman, and it goes off the glove of Greg, pardon me, Aiden Murphy at second base. Hard hit ball, and that's the first base run of the ball game for the George Brown Huskies. Yeah, that was actually really well done there. 0-2, just kind of going the other way with that one. Just kind of doing whatever you can, and it certainly paid off. See how they score that? I would, I would probably score that a hit. It was hit really hard. Yeah, it was absolutely. a tough play for Murphy. Yeah, no doubts in my mind there. I think that would go down as a hit. So that brings up the next batter, Nathan Pruitt, for the George Brown Huskies. First pitch was a ball. Wagenhofer is the base runner for George Brown at first base. First base runner of the game for the Huskies. There's a strike. All right-handed hitters so far for the Huskies in this game. We're in the top of the second inning. 4 nothing is the score in favor of the Humber Hawks. Vandergraaff is ready with the 1-1 one -one pitch. Here it comes, Brunner does not go, it's low, ball two. So, first little bit of adversity, you, you know, the mindset changes a little bit, there's got a runner at first base, although you got a four run lead and you're, you're throwing the ball well, you just gotta stay stay your, uh, keep, stay your on your game. Exactly, I think this pitcher knows, or you know, maybe he does, maybe he needs a fresh night. He is definitely good enough, he just gotta throw it in and just let's see what happens. That ball is lifted to right field, that is a base hit. And the George Brown Huskies now have runners at first and second with nobody out here in the second inning. So a single for Pruitt, and that moves Wagenhofer up to second base. Nice piece of hitting there. I'm not sure if that was a straight steal and it worked out or that was a hit and run, but regardless, it worked, uh, worked to perfection. So Gregory Hall will come up now for the Huskies. Second baseman, wears jersey number 14. First at bat of the ball game. First and second, nobody out here for George Brown in the top of the second in a 4-0 Humber lead. A couple of singles here by Wagenhofer and Pruitt. Swing and a miss for strike one. 
call looked a bit late on that one. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, they <laughs> one of the best things. I, don't, I think that was also a pitch out of the strike zone, but they need to move all the way back in the box and see fastball hit fastball. Huskies looking to get on the board here in the top of the second inning. They're down 4 nothing. Here's the 0-1. Swing and a miss, strike two. That pitch, is, I think, was in the exact same spot, if not just a teensy bit lower. So Gregory Hall, the second baseman, is down 0-2 here. Trying to move his teammates along the base pass here. Get his team on the board here in the second inning. Sudden death game. The winner of this game will face the Seneca Sting tomorrow at 11 o'clock in round two. Here's the 0-2. And it hits the batter in the foot. That sounded quite loud, like it hit his ankle. That, uh, he's trotting down to first base. And looks like he's all right. That... Uh, Maybe it hit the maybe it hit the bottom of his shoe, but that made a loud sound. Yeah, initially I was thinking, yep, that caught an ankle, but uh, either he's uh, he's very strong and he's holding it in right now, or I don't think it caught him there. So the bases are loaded for the George Brown Huskies here now in the top of the second inning, and that is going to bring out a mound visit and maybe a medical discussion or at least the trainer coming out to take a look as uh, seems to be that uh, Vandergraaf is favoring his right leg not sure what happened there or if he came down on it funny on his pitch mm -hmm. that is his uh, drive leg so that is where all okay. of the, the velocity is coming from I can't really see what it might be complaining about unless he uh, hyper extended it but what that would have gone into the knee So Vandergraaf, who struck out the side in the first inning, has, in this inning, given up two singles and then hit the third batter to load the bases with nobody out. And the Huskies would dearly like to get on the board here with uh, a run or more to get back into this ball game. Now, I don't know if uh, Vandergraaf is going to stay in the game here. We are... Discussions are going on and continuing, and it doesn't look like an fit. Oh, we've got another trainer coming out from the uh, the dugout now, from the from the first base side, as you can see on your screen. Yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not too sure. It looks like they're gonna throw a few uh, warm up pitches, or I guess pitch to gauge uh, how he's feeling. But with uh, how long this conversation is taking, I uh, I'm not confident he's gonna stay in this game. The batter will be Christian Bakumis when we're ready to resume. The right fielder, as you can see, is standing on the left side of your screen and talking to one of the members of the George Brown coaching staff. Vandergraaf has thrown a couple of pitches here, and there seems to still be a bit of uncertainty as to whether he's going to stay in the game or not. Bases are loaded here for George Brown with nobody out, and we are in the top of the second inning. 4 nothing is the score. Just so you see it on your screen, it says 2 nothing, but it's actually 4 nothing right now for the Humber Hawks. And in baseball, you can never have enough runs. No, you really can't. It's, uh, He's coming out. He is, yeah. He is going to come out of this game. It, it might be a smart decision, honestly. If it is just a muscle, uh, whether it be just like a small muscle issue, it probably is a smart move, assuming that they're going to go all the way to Saturday. So there you go. Um, Corey Vandergraaf is out of the ball game. He goes an inning plus. He struck out the side in the first inning. And here in the second, as, it, as we've mentioned, gave up a couple of singles and hit a batter. And we're going to see a new pitcher now for the Humber Hawks. And it looks to be Dylan Cardoso, number 15. So Dylan Cardoso will come in, and you know, you never know what goes on in a ball game. You know, you, you, you plan your game, you, you have your game plan, your strategy, and then an injury happens. Yeah. And then, okay, now you're tapping into your pitching a little bit more. Humber 
because they didn't finish, they didn't get the bye, they, they have to play this this game. They have to win this game. Yeah. Um, but if they do go ahead, they've, they've, they've used up a bit of pitching, and that – that comes into play when you get deep into a tournament. Yeah, it really does. It's uh, you know, offense uh, offense wins games, pitching wins championships, as the old mantra goes. It's I, you're, I guess if you're hoping to see a potentially some long relief here, some real shutdown work here, and just going off of how strong the Humber offense is, they might let this pitcher ride here, and uh, this will be his appearance for potentially the entire tournament. So Dylan Cardoso will probably get as much time as he needs to warm up here because he was not in the bullpen. Um, Vandergraaf was injured on the last play that uh, where he hit the batter and pre presumably came down um, hard on his leg. So Cardoso will be ready here. And uh, Cardoso this year, through a complete game, has a record of 1-0. Earned run average of 2.74, made three appearances, started one game, pitched 7.2 innings during the season. So he clearly has the endurance and the capability to go long distance, and this might just be what is needed. First pitch to Bakumis is taken for a strike. He backed away from that pitch, thought it was inside, but it's a, it's a strike. 0-1. Base is loaded here for George Brown. Nobody out. Top of the second, 4-0. Humber. Cardoso is ready and throws it fouled to the left side. It's 0-2. Looks like just getting out of Kinsman Stadium here. George Brown looking to get on the board here in the second inning. They gave up four runs in the first inning. They need some scoring. Count is 0-2. That ball is on the ground. It's a base hit to right. That is going to score one run, and they will hold everyone up. So it's a single, a RBI single for Bakumis, and it's now 4-1. Wow, well, we might just have ourselves a ball game here. <laughs> Manuel Rodriguez will be the batter for the George Brown Huskies. So it's an RBI single. Wagenhofer came in to score on that from third, by the way. And Nathan Pruitt was held at third to keep the bases loaded and probably a good decision. That ball, first pitch to Rodriguez, is fouled away for strike one. You don't want to run yourself into outs on the base pass if you can help it. No, exactly. They're gonna. George Brown's going to take every opportunity that it comes to them. It just Instead of playing you know, a little aggressive here, they're going to kind of just go stay in the station. I think this is going to be the same thing if uh, we see another single uh, like that. Time is called by Rodriguez. The bases are loaded. Pruitt at third. Hall at second. And Bakumis, who just knocked in the first run of the game for George Brown, is at first. Nobody out here in the top of the second. It's 4-1 Humber. Cardoso is ready. That pitch is hit up the middle. They are going to get an out at second as a great play by Aiden Murphy, the second baseman, scrambling to get that ball to keep it from going into center field. And he just reaches out to second base to record the force out, but it's an RBI, a fielder's choice for Rodriguez, and it's now 4-2. Yeah, you know what, that was a fantastic play by Murphy there. That ball goes into center field just because of how lightly that ball was hit. Runner from the third would have definitely have scored there, and probably the runner on second, who is now out, would have made it to uh, third base. So again, the score is four to two now for the Humber Hawks. One away, runners at the corners for George Brown, top of the second. Cardoso's pitch is in there for a strike. The batter is Daniel Faraci. Farachi is the nine hitter in the lineup. Swing and a miss, strike two. George Brown looking to cash some more here if they can. Two runs in, and uh, the score bug on your screen says two nothing, but it's actually four two now for Humber. Four to two for the home team. Maybe our guys back in Vancouver can uh, switch that up. Farachi steps out. 
Manuel Rodriguez is at first base, just hit the RBI fielder's choice. Gregory Hall is at third for George Brown. Pitch is on the ground, and it goes off the third baseman's glove, and that's going to score a run. And it's 4-3 to three as Hudson Lockwood could not come up with that ball. And all of a sudden, the Huskies are right back in this game, Jake. Yeah, so much uh, so much for the early top of the first offense. Pardon me, bomb the first offense. That was, uh, that certainly will go down as an E5 for the third baseman. But, uh, hey, you know what? There is, uh, can't say there's no life in the George Brown dugout. Probably would have scored the run anyway. I think even if he makes the, th unless they tried to come home with it. Uh, the runner at third got a good break on it. Yeah. But it's now a 4-3 ball game. Cardoso will see that ball hit up the middle, and it's a base hit. And they may have a force play at third, and they do. And the inning is, well, that's the second out of the inning. So the runner at third froze, thinking it might be caught, and he didn't get a far enough break. And a grid play there by the center fielder, Steven Narabaki, to force out the runner at third. They're two away. Now, you know what? There, there's uh, no harm on the runner going from second to third there. They're, uh, he was kind of toast no matter what. They're a great play by a center fielder, Naren Becky. So what otherwise would have been a single turns into a fielder's choice. Two out now, runners at first and second. And Nieva will be the batter. Brandon Nieva struck out in the first inning. Dylan Cardoso on in relief here in the second inning for Corey Vandergraaf. But he's been touched up for some runs here. That ball is down the third baseline, just foul. Maybe by a foot, maybe a foot and a half. It was very close. If that was a fair ball, that would have scored the tying run. Yeah, that definitely would have. Again, very close to uh, staying fair. They just curled a run to the left of the third base bag. So the count is a ball and a strike to Brandon Nieva. First and second, that ball just just outside for a count now of two and one. Bit of a sidearm delivery, do you think, there uh, that uh, Cardoso seems to have? Yeah, exactly. I think he's going from just above uh, you know, the 9 o'clock arm slot, and that's super difficult for hitters to pick up because they're always so used to seeing a three-quarter arm slot or straight over the top. Having something from that really throws off the hitters, both depth perception and as well as movement. That ball is cr crushed to right center field, and it is in there, up the gap, all the way to the wall. That ties the game, and another run is coming in. George Brown has the lead, 5-4, to four, on a two-run double by Brandon Nieva. Well, and that has stunned the Humber Hawks here in the second inning. George Brown now leading 5-4. Well, Brian, I don't know if, uh, if we were going to discuss this earlier. If I was to say something like that, I think, uh, you know, you'd probably look, oh, yeah, that's an opportunity, but I, there's no chance that would happen. This is, uh, this is quite the showing from George Brown. I love it. And all of a sudden, it's a bat around inning for the Huskies. They have posted five here in the top of the second to take a 5-4 lead and that ball is hammered to right field that's a base hit and they will hold the runner at third as it's another hit for the Huskies first and third with two away and it will bring up the tenth batter of the inning and Dylan Cardoso is getting rocked here for the Humber Hawks here in the second inning yeah, he really is. It's um, He's just leaving it over the plate and people, the guys are just putting the sticks out to get it it's, uh, I'm a little surprised that the third base coach for George Brown didn't send him. The outfielder was pretty far out there. I, uh, I think I would have risked it even as a base runner, but uh, nonetheless, they, uh, they still hold the lead. Well, we're going to see a mound visit now as uh, Dylan Cardoso came on in relief in this inning for the, uh, for the starter, Corey Vandergraaf. And since he's come in, he's given up a single, a fielder's choice. There was an error at third, which was a big one. Uh, then a fielder's choice that was a, would have been a single, but uh, now Rebecca throwing a runner for a force out at third to Lockwood. That was a single. That would have scored a that that would have kept the inning going, except uh, the the base runner had to freeze. Mm -hmm. And then since then we've seen a double and another single. So the Huskies have found their offense here in the top of the second inning. It is a 5-4 lead. George Brown 
over the Humber Hawks, second inning. Top of the second. George Brown in the blue uniforms. They are the visitors in this game. So first and third, two out. The mound visit is over, and the batter is Wagenhofer, who started this whole inning with a leadoff single and scored. Brady Wagenhofer is the shortstop. Fouled off the first pitch, it is 0-1. The Huskies have runners at first and third with two away. Looking to get more here in a, in a big second inning. That ball is ripped to right field, and it is foul, just barely wow. foul. That ball was scorched to right field, and if it had been fair, two all, runs would have scored. Yeah, I think yeah. two runs would have come in there. Yeah. That was, uh, I, I don't, I didn't get a good look at that one going down the line, but you just see it off the bat, and that ball was, uh, that ball was hit hard. Brady Wagenhofer now with an 0-2 count. Cardoso trying to end the inning, and he throws that away, and they will oh not send the runner from third, but the runner at first will go down to second on a wild pitch. But boy, that, uh, it's a deep backstop here, and you can see on your screen how the ball comes back. The Fence is well behind home plate, and the uh, George Brown Huskies may have missed an opportunity there. I'm not too sure if they were caught sleeping or what exactly happened there, but Humber just caught a huge break. It would have been the sixth run of the inning, but Nieva did, uh, did declined to go. He started, but Brandon Nieva put the brakes on and decided not to come. And uh, hard to say. You know, again, you don't want to run yourself out of the inning if you can help it. They have second and third now with two away. The count is one and two. Pitch is hit to right field. Chasing back, going back to it on the right side and caught by the Hawks is Robert Champion, ending an enormous inning, maybe one of the biggest innings of the year so far for the George Brown Huskies. Five runs, and we've played an inning and a half. The George Brown Huskies are leading the Humber Hawks by a score of five to four. Well, as you can see, I don't know, just off to the right side of your screen right now, the Humber Hawks are having a big discussion and meeting right now, and the coaches are having a, just to settle, settle everybody down right now as the Hawks came out screaming in the first inning with four runs, but they saw their starting pitcher have to leave the game, Jake, in the top of the second inning after loading the bases with nobody out, and Dylan Cardoso came in and... Gave up a number of hits, and all of a sudden, George Brown has a 5-4 lead. Not what we would have expected. No, definitely. I don't think that was to be expected, no matter who who you talk to or who you ask, being all, all competency. It's, uh, we saw two totally different pitchers uh, from the start in the first inning and the second inning. That being said, obviously, of course, you have to take into account the potential injury and how much that affects it. By our calculation, so five runs... I. It looks like there were six hits for George Brown in that inning. After getting struck uh, three up, three down, strikeout, uh, three strikeouts in the first inning, the Huskies get five runs on six hits, and there was a big error defensively for the uh, Humber Hawks in that inning that uh, allowed things to extend. And the Huskies left two runners on base, so they could have had more. So we'll go to the bottom of the second inning, and it's already a very, very high-scoring game, but the George Brown Huskies have the lead here, 5-4. The leadoff hitter in the second inning will be Dennis DeBanning, the OCAA's Player of the Year. He doubled in the first run for the Humber Hawks in the first inning and then was promptly picked off second base. First pitch to DeBanning is in there for a strike. Michael Guardiero will stay on the mound for the Huskies. George Brown in blue, Humber Hawks in white. Count is 0-1 to Dennis DeBanning. Pitch is popped up and foul out of play to the right side and it's 0-2. 
Michael Guardiero left the first inning, and you know the, the Humber Hawks, I think, left a couple of base runners on themselves. Could have had more, but they only got the four. Now they find themselves down a run. Yeah, they. Um, it's interesting to see because I think this is kind of a a bizarre circumstance for them. I don't really think they're very experienced in uh, being down, especially this early. DeBanning will foul that one away off speed and did a good job to spoil it, knock it away. Count remains 0-2. Scoreboard says 1-2, but I believe the count is 0-2. Guardiero pitched, Ooh. just misses. That was really close, and the George Brown Huskies are furious with that call. Yeah, you know, with uh, you don't want to give uh, DeBanning any extra pitches. That uh, that was in the strike zone, I, uh, I do believe. So DeBanning is now facing the, the two-two count. Pitch is taken, strike three. He looked at that one. He didn't get that call. One away. There you go. Great pitch there. That is the second strikeout of the game for Michael Guardiero. One away. Humber Hawks trailing this game 5-4. We're in the bottom of the second inning. The Humber Hawks are the home team. And the batter is Cam Wilcox. He walked and scored in the first inning. First pitch is way off the plate. Ball one. Not an easy task to keep the OCAA's player of the year off the base pass. That pitch is fouled away, one and one, Cam Wilcox. We are in the bottom of the second inning, Humber batting. Pitch is low, two and one. Cam Wilcox walked his last appearance. Right-handed batter. Guardiero is ready. That ball has hit the third base and unable to come up with it is Brandon Nieva. So we have a Humber Hawks base runner with one away here in the bottom of the second inning. Hard hit ball, tough play. Maybe had a shot at it, Jake. Yeah, you know what? That was, uh, I think that would have been a tough play no matter what. It, uh, it looked like it took like a, just a tiny hop up and caught him potentially just on the top of the wrist. Uh, which is what caused the ball to go into short left field. Regardless, still a very hard hit ball. So it'll be OCAA All-Star Aiden Murphy at the plate now as they check Wilcox back to first. And you can just sense we're, we're right beside the uh, the Humber uh, dugout here, Jake. And you can, there's just a sense of urgency now that uh, after a comfortable 4 nothing lead has turned into a 5-4 deficit. Yeah, really. It was uh, you know kind of just measuring the differences between the bottom of the first and bottom of the second. Bottom of the first, the Hawks were just all up and excited. They're still up and excited now, but you can still feel that it's just a little more uncertainty in the air. Aiden Murphy swings and misses at strike one. One ball and one strike. Another thing that uh, we were feeling the wind pick up just a little bit here at Kinsman Stadium. The temperature's dropping just a little bit. And looking at the weather radar, we see there's a strike to uh, Murphy, and the count is 1-2. and two. Murphy is 0-1 for 1 in the game. He struck out in the, in the first inning. But uh, there does appear to be significant rain just to the west that might arrive here in the next, uh, within the next hour, maybe sooner than that. The 1-2 pitch uh, misses for 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, we've expected rain all day. We had some earlier in the day, just before uh, the Durham College and the Fanshawe game. Uh, that being said, it's been it's been pretty clear so far. It's like not for long. Two two pitch is high, and the count is now full to Aiden Murphy. The Humber Hawks have a runner at second. That's Cam Wilcox. Or sorry, runner at first in Cam Wilcox, who singled just a moment ago. Hard hit ball to third base. Three and two is the count to Aiden Murphy. Pitch is fouled. Be interesting to see Cam Wilcox on first. He might be off on the pitch. Signs coming from third base coach right now. Again, the, you don't see the score bug on your screen, I don't believe, but uh, it 
The Humber Hawks are trailing this game 5-4. We're in the bottom of the second inning. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Popped up high to the right side. Might be playable. Might be playable. And it is not. Giving chase there was Aiden Colangelo, but not able to get to it. The count will remain three balls and two strikes to Aiden Murphy. Four runs for Humber in the first inning. Five runs for George Brown in the second. We are in the bottom of the second inning. One out, runner at first. Full count to Aiden Murphy. Michael Guardiero trying to get his second strikeout against him and he will be high and miss for the walk. That was quite a battle. That was an eight pitch walk. And Murphy goes down to first base. Wilcox move over to second. Now it's first and second with one away and Justin Raspanti will be the batter. He doubled and scored in the first inning. So the Hawks trying to set the table here, Jake. Yeah, you know what, this is uh, a big opportunity. Like I said, I don't think the Humber Hawks are well versed in being down this early. Let's ball, see what they can do. That ball is hit very hard to the left side down into the George, Bad, George Brown bullpen in the left left field corner. It was hit hard, but but uh, well foul. Raspanti again, as we mentioned, doubled. He is one of the Humber hits in this game. He's the DH. Bats from the left side. Cam Wilcox is the runner at second. Aiden Murphy is the runner at first. The Hawks are trailing 5-4 here in the second. Pitch foul to the left side, 0-2. It's clear he's looking for something up in the zone. First two pitches have both been up. Both pitches fouled off to the side. Respandi will step back in. Count is 0-2. Michael Guardiero throws and puts that ball on the ground. They will go to second to try and get one. They get it on, and they're not able to turn the double play. But a good job there by the pitcher to at least get the one of the lead runners. Uh, moving up to third on the play is Wilcox. So the tying run is now at third for the Humber Hawks, but now there are two out. Yeah, very tough play just to kind of, he pitched it a little, like spin around there just trying to get him. Happy to say he got that runner on second. So two out, runners at first and third now with two away. The batter is David Boato. He's the shortstop. Bats from the right side. Hits that ball hard to the right side. It is foul and no play on that one. So it's 0-1. The Hawks looking to tie the game up here or potentially go ahead. We are in the bottom of the second inning. Humber down 5-4 to George Brown. And the George Brown infield, are gonna, they're going to talk about the situation here right now. Certainly they'll be looking at uh, Justin Raspanti at first base. And if he goes to second base, do you throw down? Or, and, and, or do you just hold on to the ball and make sure that you don't get that, let that run come in from third? Yeah, you know what, That's uh, it's a tough call no matter what. I think I would just eat the play. I wouldn't uh, wouldn't even test it. That pitch is fouled away. Boato's down 0-2. And a chance for the George Brown Huskies to get out of a bit of a jam here in the bottom of the second inning and maintain the lead. Count is 0-2 to David Boato. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. The inning is over. The Humber Hawks are turned away, leaving two base runners. And we've played two innings now here at Kinsman Civic Memorial Stadium in Oshawa. The sudden death game, it's the George Brown Huskies five and the Humber Hawks four. So we go to the third inning now here in Oshawa. George Brown leading Humber five to four. And 
Yes, you did hear that correct. 5-4 for the George Brown Huskies after two innings of play. Four runs for Humber in the first. But George Brown struck for five runs in the top of the second. And we that's where we are right now. Two innings complete, and it's a 5-4 lead for the Huskies. And certainly there's... Uh, just a little bit of urgency for the Humber Hawks right now, knowing that uh, they are the two-time defending OCAA champions, but also knowing that this is a sudden-death game. And no chance to defend the, the title if, uh, if you don't win this ball game. And uh, they, uh, they, 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 they've had some adversity here in this game so far. They had, to, they had to take out their starting pitcher, Corey Vandergraaf, with an injury in the second inning. Dylan Cardoso remains in the game for Humber, but he got hit pretty hard. Uh, after when he came in yeah it really has uh it really is probably not the uh the really the idea of uh, troy black the uh, head coach for the humber hawks it's uh i think at this point going into the top of the third he is on a very very short leash there's uh we can't really see down the uh, right hand side i think uh, the viewers can but uh it, it wouldn't surprise me to see the uh, humber bullpen already up in action just in case anything does go uh, haywire and of course in a game like this in a, in a tournament you you, you want to try and save your pitching for later in the tournament but you also have to win this game and uh, the Humber Hawks have already lost their starting pitcher Cardoso is now into his second inning of work and even if you do end up winning this game it does have per repercussions for for Friday and, and particularly for Saturday exactly yeah when you when you go down and you think of it long term you leave this guy in for the entire game, he is going to be out for the rest of the tournament. So the leadoff hitter for George Brown here in the top of the third inning is Nathan Pruitt. He's the designated hitter. He singled and scored in that five-run George Brown second inning. Here's the 0-1 pitch. It's hit on the ground hard to third. Nice play by Lockwood. He'll come up to it, throw it over to first, and gets the out. Nice play there, one away. Yeah, that was sort of a, almost an ice cream catch there by the third baseman, but uh, hey, you know what? It catch the catches, and that was an out. Did a good, charge of, of react, a good job of reacting to the ball and charging it, and uh, yeah, stayed in his glove nicely, but it did have that sort of snow cone kind of feel to it, which is always a precarious feeling for a, for a fielder when you like ball's not right in the pocket of the glove. Mm -hmm. But uh, he held on to it and threw out the runner, and that's one out. So it's Gregory Hall now for the Humber, or sorry, for the uh, George Brown Huskies. And he fouls the first pitch away from Dylan Cardoso, 0-1. Hall was hit by a pitch and later scored in the five-run Huskies second inning. We are in the top of the third right now, 5-4 George Brown over Humber. That pitch hits Hall. Second time he's been hit by a pitch. Poor guy's going to need some Advil after this. He was hit by a pitch in the, in the second inning, and that was the last pitch thrown by Humber's starter, Corey Vandergraaf, and he came out of the game after that pitch. So Hall is on for the second time as a hit batter, base runner, and Bakumis will be the batter now for George Brown. Tall. Right fielder, number 19, Christian Bakumis. He singled a run in back in the second inning. So he has an RBI, and the first pitch was a ball. We'll keep an eye on Gregory Hall at first base. And he gets a big lead but does not go. Pitch is high and away for ball two, 2-0. Two and oh. Seems that the pitcher at this point is just watching. He's not really too focused with the runners on right now. He's just trying to throw strikes. George Brown leading this game 5-4. We're in the top of the third. Runner does not go. Ball is taken for a strike. They throw down to second, but the runner put the brakes on. So Tyrus Hall heard everybody yelling, or Tyrus, Tyrus, Tyrus Bath, rather, throwing the ball down to second, hearing everybody yell, runner, 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 thinking the runner was going, but the runner did put the brakes on. Two and one is the count now to Christian Bakumis. He swings over the top of that one, and it's two and two. 
That was a great pitch there. It looked like he pulled uh, a sinker out. Burned me there. That one had a lot of late breaking life. It just dropped right out of the strike zone. Two balls and two strikes. Christian Bakumis will swing and miss at strike three. Two away. And that is the first strikeout of the game for Dylan Cardoso. The and the fourth strikeout of the game overall for the Huskies. So runner at first, two away now, and it'll be the number eight hitter, Manuel Rodriguez. He reached on a fielder's choice and knocked in a run back in the second inning. Gregory Hall is the runner at first. Pitch is popped to the right, might be playable. And it is caught by Cam Wilcox in foul territory just to the right of your screen to end the inning. So uh, the, the George Brown Huskies are turned away. They leave a runner, no hits in the third inning. And after two and a half innings, it's the George Brown Huskies five and the Humber Hawks four. Okay, so we're going to the bottom of the third inning now here at Kinsman Civic Memorial Stadium. And we know that uh, we're working on the score bug for you on the screen, but uh, we can update you that the score is George Brown 5 and the Humber Hawks 4 as we go to the bottom of the third inning in this sudden death game here in Oshawa. The winner of this game will play the Seneca Sting tomorrow in the first game of the second round. Seneca getting a bye in the first round by virtue of finishing first place in the East Division. Earlier today, the Durham Lords were 6-4 to four winners over the Fanshawe Falcons, so Durham advances, and Durham will play the St. Saint Clair Saints tomorrow at 1.30 here at Kinsman Stadium. All games here in Oshawa at Kinsman Civic Memorial Stadium. You will notice on your screen you're seeing a lot of haze with the lights over the... Uh, over the field looking like uh, almost uh, like umbrellas um, in, in left center field and in right field. It's very hazy, very heavy sky right now, and there is the threat of rain. Um, hoping we don't see it, but uh, we looked at the radar about uh, 10 minutes ago, and uh, we may see some precipitation before this game is out. Yeah, and the precipitation is not the part that really worries us, that potential for thunderstorms as well later in, uh, in about an hour's time. We're uh, obviously hoping this passes, but in the off chance, this may be a, a bit of a long night. So we'll hope for uh, for good luck from the weather side of things. As we look, uh, of course, we're in Oshawa, and i just checking the radar right now. You can see that uh, there is some heavy rain over Toronto right now and moving rapidly to the east. So we'll keep an eye on that. We go to the bottom of the third inning and the Humber Hawks will send Robert Champion to the plate as their first batter. Champion was hit by a pitch in the first inning. Humber trailing this game 5-4. We're in the bottom of the third inning. Pitch is in there for a strike. One ball and one strike to Robert Champion, the right fielder for the Humber Hawks. Seems like the Hawks have a new life to them in the, the dugout just to our right here along the first base side. There's a big swing and a miss, a huge cut, one and two. Michael Guardiaro continues on the mound, the right-hander for the George Brown Huskies. He was touched for four runs in the first, but got out of a, a jam with a couple runners on base back in the second. Pitch taken for strike three, and that's the fourth strikeout of the game for Guardiaro, one away. I think that's a, either the second or third caught looking uh, for the Hawks. Something's uh, clearly got to change around their pitch selection. Yeah. That's second, I believe, yeah. Yeah, yeah fourth strikeout of the game for Guardiero, and that'll bring up the catcher, Tyrus Bath. He singled and 
That was back in the first inning. Bath bites from the right side. Pitches away for ball one. We are in the bottom of the third inning. Humber is the home team. They are in the white jerseys. And they are trailing the George Brown Huskies 5-4 here in the bottom of the third. Michael Guardiaro's pitch is in there for a strike. One and one. Bases are empty. Bath will look at a ball, two and one. Bath is the number eight hitter in the lineup. He will be followed by Hudson Lockwood. And then it'll be the top of the order for Steven Nowrabecki. Here's the two one. That's in there for a strike, two and two. And Guardiero, is, is, he's finding the zone. Yeah, Humber's watching a lot of strikes go by. Something has clearly got to change. Here's the 2-2 two -two offering. Taken just high. Three and two is the count now. Full count. Humber looking to get the tying run on base here in the bottom of the third. And the full count offering is high for ball four. So that's a walk, and we'll bring up Hudson Lockwood. He was hit by a pitch in the first inning. And that is walk number four in the game from Guardiaro. He's struck out four, he's walked four. Number nine hitter, where's jersey number nine for the... Humber Hawks. And that pitch hits him in the leg. And that moves the base runner up to second. So it's first and second now with one out. And here comes Steven Nowrabecki. That is definitely not what the George Brent Huskies wanted to do right there, is to walk and then hit a batter and bring up Stephen Navarbecki, Dennis DeBanning, and Cameron Wilcox. That's just not not the formula for success for, no, from, from George Brown's standpoint. No, it's really not, but something clearly has, uh, has got to change. I think Tor Black down third baseline is uh, just trying to tell him, hey, you know what, this guy's going to throw fastballs. He might be a little wild, so maybe see to strike and then uh, go hacking. Stephen Navarbecki comes to the plate. He is one for two in the ball game. He doubled to lead off the game. Later scored in that four run first for the Hawks. He grounded out to second to end that same inning. He comes up here with runners at first and second, one away, and the Hawks down a run. He rips that ball to left field for a base hit. And it gets away from the left fielder, bounces away, ties the game. And they will hold the runner at third, but it is now a 5-5 game as that base hit bounced off the leg or off the glove of the left fielder, Manuel Rodriguez, and it's now a 5-5 game. Yeah, you know what, I... Uh, might not be a bad idea just to walk uh, Dennis here. So Lockwood comes all the way to third base. And the error in left field allows the runners to move up an extra base. It's an RBI for now Rebecca in a 5-5 game. Humber now with runners at second and third with one away. And here's Dennis DeBanning, the player of the year in the OCAA. Looks at a ball that gets away of the dirt and a nice job by Daniel Faraci to make sure that didn't get too far away because that would have brought the go-ahead run home for Humber. Yeah, I, really, I think uh, they're going to kind of play a conservative. They have a very strong hitter up. They're going to let him work his magic. The infield is in here with second and third and one away. Ball is in the dirt for ball two. And like you say, Jake, nothing. They, they don't want to give to Banning anything that he can crush. We know he can do that. DeBanning this year 
Uh, now they're going to intentionally walk him, just what you were thinking. So DeBanning will go down to first of the count, 2-0. and oh. They just said, you know what, we're not going to, we're not going to try our luck against the uh, the OCAA's player of the year. So the bases are loaded now with one out. That does put the force play on, and George Brown is going to talk the defensive strategy now on the mound. I was going to say that uh, DeBanning this year had five home runs, 27 RBIs, a slugging percentage of 976. Just incredible numbers. And uh, I guess the best thing, the best defense is if you can, take the bat out of his hands. Yeah, it really is. You know what, I would, I'd rather just put him on instead of uh, having the off chance of him getting his arms extended at something. But that, sorry, uh, Jake, that does get, bring up Cam Wilcox in a huge situation now. Yeah, another thing about Dennis DeBanning, the guy is also an IBL player for, uh, I believe it's the, for Welland, I believe he played this year, or might have been London. First pitch to Cameron Wilcox is a ball. 1-0, bases loaded, Humber, 5, George Brown, 5. We're in the bottom of the third inning. Wilcox will rip that one to right center. That's a base hit. That's going to score one. It's going to score two. And here comes another run. It's a three-run double. And it's now 8-5, Humber. Cam Wilcox with a three-run double. 8-5, Hawks. Well, I guess you gotta say it was only a matter of time, right? So Wilcox in this game has a walk, two hits, but that was huge. A three run double to put Humber up eight five. So the pendulum swings back the other way. Four runs for Humber in the first, and now four of them here in the third. Eight five is the score in favor of Humber. And only one away with a runner at second. And Aiden Murphy will look at a strike. Count as one and one. Michael Guardiero will stay on the mound. It's been a an active game for him in the pitching side of things. He pitches that tie, high and tight. Ball two. But now the Hawks threatening again. And they're just so capable of exploding on a moment's notice. Yeah, it really is. You give them any chance, they will break down the door. There's ball three. Three balls and a strike. Michael Guardiero. The, the George Brown Huskies came into this bottom of the third inning with a 5-4 lead, but they now trail 8-5. Here's the 3-1 pitch, and that hits Murphy. And he'll go to first, so it's now first and second, one away. And that will, again, have the George Brown infield talking about what they're going to do. Again, they're only down, they're, they're down three, very much in this game. But they have to make sure that, the, that Humber does not get the ball rolling. And it really feels like the ball is, the momentum has totally changed once again in this game. Yeah, the boulder is uh, rolling down the mound at this point for Humber. It's, uh, I'm... There's one part of me that's uh, questioning why hasn't uh, George Brown gone to the bullpen already at this point. Uh, that being said, it look, oh, never mind, it looks like they, yeah, they are going to do it. So that's the end of the line for Michael Guardiero, who had a rough first inning, and, and here in the third inning a bit of a rough ride. Had a great second inning. But uh, he's going to give the ball over, and we will see a new George Brown Huskies pitcher and it's a left-hander and it's number nine Just trying to get an eye on him here Do you bear with us so it's left-hander David DeCasson will come on in relief here in the bottom of the third inning in an 8-5 game, Humber leading over the George Brown Huskies. Humber 
with four runs here so far in the third inning. And they have runners at first and second with just one away. And so far in this game, it's you know the top of the order, the, the, the guys, Stephen now Rebecca, Dennis DeBanning, Ken Wilcox, Aiden Murphy, have, have caused a lot of damage. The big hit in this game so far was that th three-run double by Cam Wilcox a few minutes ago that broke open a 5-5 tie with, a th with three runs and forcing George Brown now to change pitchers. David DeCasson comes into the game with six appearances this season, started six, had a record of 0-3, but uh, led the George Brown Huskies in pitching with 21.2 innings pitched. Struck out 15. But uh, the Humber Hawks certainly come as advertised. Offense um, and, the, and the promise of that offense and, and everything coming together here tonight so far. Yeah, really just another uh, explosion of offense here in the third inning, bottom of the third, and it's... I don't think it's uh, anywhere near over this inning yet. <laughs> so DeCasson is ready. Justin Raspanti is the batter. And he will look at ball one. And the Humber bench has come back alive. There's a little bit of urgency in the second inning when they fell behind in this game, 5-4. But uh, now they are back in the driver's seat. David DeCasson, left-hander. We'll see that ball on the ground. It goes to second. They will they will get the force of the runner, Aiden Murphy, for the second out of the inning. The batter, Raspandi, is on safe with a fielder's choice, and that moves Wilcox to third. Yeah, smart play by the runner. Run, run the first and second there. As he saw the second baseman try and tag him, just back up, just stay out of the way, try not to get tagged before he can make it throw to first. So David Boada will be the batter. It is an 8-5 lead for Humber here in the bottom of the third. That ball is skied up in the air, and it might be playable for the catcher. And he makes the play. Daniel Faraci backpedaling a bit, but did a good job to bring that in and end the inning and ends what could have been a lot more for the Humber Hawks here in the third inning. But, uh, man, we've had fireworks all night long in this game. Three complete. It is the Humber Hawks, eight, and the George Brown Huskies, five. And as we uh, move to the fourth inning here in an 8-5 ball game for the Humber Hawks, we see a new pitcher coming in for the Hawks in the fourth, and it is a left-hander. Number 10, I believe. 10 or 18, I think. No, it's number 10, and it's um, Maxim Skoropadsky. Maxim Skoropadsky will come into the game. He made two appearances during the regular season, posted an earned run average of seven, only through two innings in, during the season, with three strikeouts and uh, no, no wins, no losses. And the rain is starting to come down here in Oshawa as we had been fearing um, the possibility of, of rain. Right now the rain is very, very light but the radar suggests that uh, it could get heavier in the, uh, in the coming moments. So we'll, uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. But uh, we go to the fourth inning in an 8-5 ball game and the Humber Hawks leading 8-5 over the George Brown Huskies. I think we're going to take a break at this time just so we can move our gear back so we don't get uh, rained on and ruin the stream here. Okay, so we're just going to turn the audio down. You'll still continue to see the video for a moment, but uh, we'll be back with the call in just a moment.
Okay, so our audio is back up, and uh, due to the rain, we're just uh, moving our equipment around a little bit in our broadcast location here at Kinsman Stadium. We are just off to the right side uh, near the first base dugout, not far from home plate, but uh, we are, our angle is just to the right of um, on the first base side from, from what you are seeing. But uh, the rain is falling and still very, very light, and uh, we hope we can get this game in tonight Sudden death game between the Humber Hawks and the George Brown Huskies. We go to the top of the fourth inning now, and it is a 8-5 lead for Humber. And we uh, we know the score bug has not uh, been able to reappear so far for you on the screen, so we'll keep keep you apprised of the score. So Skorpatsky is the new pitcher for Humber, left-hander. We'll fire that in for a strike. Swung on and missed. Daniel Faraci is the Faraci is the batter, the number nine hitter in the George Brown lineup. The count is one ball and one strike. And that is strike two taken. Skoropatsky is ready. Fires it in, swung on and missed for strike three. First strikeout of the game for Skoropadsky. That'll turn the lineup over for the Huskies. And it will be Kyle Bandura, the center fielder, Batting from the right side. With one away, he takes a pitch high for ball one. In this game, Skorpatsky is 0 for 2. He struck out and reached on a fielder's choice. 1-0 pitch is way outside ball two. Again, in this game, four runs for Humber in the fourth. Five runs for George Brown in the second. And then four more runs for Humber in the third. And that got us to an 8-5 score here in the top of the fourth. That pitch is in there for a strike, two and one. We are in the light rain here in Oshawa. Sudden death game between Huskies and the Hawks. Humber won both of the games in the regular season between these two teams. 11-1 and 12-9. We can see on the light post just uh, beside the PA booth, the rain is starting to pick up just a little bit. That ball is fouled. And the count goes to two and two. And yeah, the rain yeah definitely is, is, is picking up in intensity. I would still consider it light, but uh, we we may be in a situation where we may be seeing a rain delay, and hopefully not, but here's the 2-2 pitch to Bandura. It's low, ball three, three and two. George Brown trailing this game 8-5, top of the fourth inning. Winner of this game will face the Seneca Sting tomorrow in the first, in the first game of the second round. That game's slated to start at 11 o'clock. Maxim Skoropodsky, the third pitcher of the ball game for the Humber Hawks. Here's the full count pitch. It's low, ball four, and it's a walk. And there's a base runner for the Huskies. And it brings up Brandon Nieva. And earlier in this game, Nieva had a big double that scored two runs, a two-run double back in the second inning. So he is one for two in the game, but that one was a big one, and it knocked in two George Brown runs. Brings And by the way, puts the tying run on deck for the Huskies. It does, yeah. Again, we're only, we're only in the fourth inning. Skoropodsky will deliver, and that pitch is inside for ball one.
Pitch was close, but uh, called the ball. Kyle Bandura is the runner at first for the Huskies. Skoropodsky will step off. Of course, as a lefty, he has a good view of the runner on first. As yeah. you would as a pitcher yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I think in this situation, though, it's uh, Amber still has a pretty pretty big lead, so I wouldn't even really consider it unless it's, uh, unless it's getting a little too excessive. Skoropodsky's pitch was very high, 2-0. and Huskies looking to get base runners here. Rain falling here in Oshawa. 2-0. There's a strike. 2-1. Huskies coming up to the middle part of the rotor right now. Neva is the number two hitter. Aiden Colangelo is on deck. Followed by Brady Wagenhofer. George Brown put plated five runs back in the second inning. And looking to close the gap here. They are down three runs here in the top of the fourth. 8-5, Humber. And Skaropodsky steps off. And we are uh, in a tent here. And we can hear the rain um, bouncing off the top of our broadcast area here. Yeah, it's really visible out and just in the regular field out here now. The rain is uh, really picked up. Pitch is low, and the count now three balls and one strike. You start to wonder here, Brian, that uh, the rain might be affecting the pitchers, uh, just how much control it has. That being said, the baseball already has zone. It's already a fit, pretty slippery object. You add rain, so you add some sort of liquid. You, you lose a lot of control. 3-1 pitch is low, ball four, and it's two consecutive walks. So now it's first and second with one away. Aiden Colangelo will come up to the plate as the, representing the tying run in this ball game. And we are going to see a mound visit by the Humber Hawks. And the rain is very steady. In fact, uh, I, would, I would almost consider it moderate at this point. And um, whether or not we... Uh, keep playing through it I, I think we're going to keep playing through it as long as we can of course it's a it's a tournament that will continue tomorrow and on Saturday and boy the Humber team is really taking their time on the mound right now and the umpire is saying okay that's enough yeah strategy behind this is obviously you have to assume at this point that there is another guy potentially two guys getting loose in the bullpen right now the idea is that they can just buy him a few a uh, few more pitches and might be able to make a change, but it looks like he's going to face this batter here. So the radar, looking at the weather radar, it, uh, this is this is going to be this rain is going to be with us for a little while anyway. A good, I think a good half hour, if not longer, and it might get a lot heavier than what it is right now. Mm -hmm. Rain is really starting to fall. One out, runners at first and second. Swing and a miss by Aiden Colangelo, 0-1. Just to recap here, we are in the top of the fourth inning, sudden death game. Humber in white, George Brown in blue. Humber is leading this game 8-5, top of the fourth, one away, runners at first and second. Skaropodsky's pitch is fouled away, strike two. And, you know, maybe that, uh, that mound visit just gives Skaropodsky a chance to just catch his breath and, and, and regroup, refocus, and, you know, you, you try and put the rain out of your mind as a pitcher, but... Uh, it's pretty hard when you feel it coming down every drop. No, exactly. I was never really a fan of uh, mound visits back in, uh, when I was pitching collegiate ball and stuff like that, but it depends on it. It gives you time just to kind of relax, to truly reset, and also as well an opportunity to dry off the ball completely. <laughs> <laughs> At least for the first pitch. It's exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's take what you can get. Count is one ball and two strikes to Aiden Colangelo. Runners at first and second, one away. Huskies looking to climb back into this game. 
they were leading at 5-4. They are down 8-5 at the moment. Colangelo is one for two in the ball game. He has a single and a strikeout. Here's the one-two. That is hit high and pop foul right side and out of play. No play there for Cam Wilcox, first baseman of the Hawks. And we'll do it again. One ball and two strikes. Aiden Colangelo looking to move these runners up, maybe knock in one. Here's the one two pitch. Ball is hit to right side. They will try for the double play. They go to second for one, on to first, and not in time. Not in time. Very close play at first. It's a fielder's choice for Colangelo, and that will move Bandera up to third base. The inning will continue. Very close play at first. Yeah, another one of those bang bang plays. I saw one in the uh, Durham College Fanshawe game just a little bit earlier, and that turned out to be uh, crucial <laughs> in the rally for Durham College. Potentially could be a little bit of foreshadowing. So it's first and third now with two away, and the batter is Brady Wagenhofer. He is one for two in the ball game. He is singled and flied out. Ball is low and in the dirt, and a nice block by Tyrus Bath there to make sure it doesn't squirt by. Again, very slippery conditions right now because of the, of the rain coming down a little bit lighter than it was a few minutes ago, but it's still raining. It's very slippery conditions. Huskies looking to try and at least get one here in the fourth inning. They are down by three, 8-5 Humber. Count is 1-0, and oh, and Maxim Skaropodsky will step off. He's stepped off many times so far in this inning. I'm not sure if it's just a miscommunication with this catcher or. <laughs> Here's the 1-0 pitch to Wagenhofer. And it is very high. Two balls, no strikes. It looks like he changed delivery there. That higher leg kick seems to be relatively correlated with uh, less control. Kyle Bandura is the runner at third. Aiden Colangelo is at first. Brady Wagenhofer is the batter. He hits that ball hard to center field. Center fielder giving chase. Now Rebecca, he's going back, and he tracks it down in the rain. He had to run about 30 yards to come up with that ball. Great running catch with the rain coming down in his face to end the threat, and the inning is over. So the George Brown Huskies do not score in the fourth. They leave two runners, and we've played three and a half innings here in Oshawa. It is the Humber Hawks eight and the George Brown Huskies five. So bottom of the fourth coming up now for Humber. And uh, just looking back at that play just a moment ago, that, that ball was hit very well. Very, very hard to left center. And uh, now Rebecca, who's, th that's a place where experience, poise, uh, really comes into play to catch a ball. Because if that lands, that would have scored two runs. Yeah, it really did. I think off of uh, off a of contact there, I wasn't really expecting it. I think I would have just been a very casual fly ball to uh, Nakramenki out of the center field. Boy, was I ever wrong. That ball, I, you, you said it well. I was thinking at least probably 50 feet or sorry, 50 yards or anything like that just to go get the ball. But uh, yeah, truly, it kind of just shows like how good he is at tracking the ball there. Fantastic work. He definitely caught that ball in a full sprint, and uh, he needed every last. If he didn't get the, the start that he got on it, there was no way he was going to get that. And in fact, it probably would have rolled all the way to the fence. Mm -hmm. So that was a big, big defensive play there for the Humber Hawks and got them out of a bit of a jam there in the fourth inning. So the Huskies will take the field again to play some defense. Now they have to play field, they have to play defense with the rain coming down here at Kinsman Stadium. And uh, fairly moderate rain, so it's not an easy, not an easy thing for the pitcher, not an easy thing for the fielders uh, to, to play, the, uh, because the turf gets wet, the ball gets wet, the, the, the dirt gets a little bit muddier, sticks to your cleats. A lot of things can happen in, in conditions like this. 
Yeah, as a fielder, it is, uh, it's your worst nightmare. If you get a ground ball that's going right through the grass infield, uh, it, makes a, it makes it a lot harder. You really have to be concentrated and make sure you're hitting your target square on because if you're not, it's going to go flying. So the Hawks will send up their seven, eight, and nine hitters here in the bottom of the fourth inning with an 8-5 lead over the George Brown Huskies. It'll be Robert Champion leading things off. He is 0 for 1 in the ball game. Takes a strike from David DeCasson, the second pitcher of the ball game for George Brown. Champion was hit by a pitch in the first inning. There is a ball, 1-1, one and, one, and he struck out looking in the third. Champion is the right fielder for the Hawks, wears jersey number eight, bats from the left side. Humber in the white jerseys, he hits that ball hard to the right side, it's foul. Humber with four runs in the first and four runs in the third. George Brown got all five of their runs in the second. We're in the bottom of the fourth. And Champion Fouls that away. Waited, waited, waited for that off-speed pitch to come in and knocked it away. Yeah, well done there. That was just kind of like it's a fighting uh, escape route there. Count is one and two. He fouls that one away to stay alive. Same thing. David DeCasson is the pitcher for the George Brown Huskies. He's the, the left-hander. And he came on in relief of Michael Guardiero, who started the game. That ball is on the ground to second base. And Gregory Hall comes up with it, throws on to first for the out, one away. And again, in conditions like this, nothing can be taken for granted. Even a ground ball that looks routine mm -hmm. is going to skip. It's going to skid a little bit on the grass. It's going to have water and, and dirt on it. And a uh, good play there by Gregory Hall. Yeah, it's a little bit easier on the right side of the infield because, I mean, really, worst case scenario, you can just underhand it. Just better be hard. But on the left side, you are uh, you are forced to try and make a strong throw across a diamond. Batter is Tyrus Bath, catcher for the Hawks, and he looks at ball one. Bath in this game is one for one, singled in the first inning. And he takes a strike, one and one. Single in the first inning, and he walked and scored in the third. Count as a ball and a strike. One away. That ball is very high, two and one. Humber eight, George Brown five. We are in the bottom of the fourth inning. Sudden death game here in the OCAA 2021 Men's Baseball Championships. That pitch is taken high for ball three, three and one. Wow, that was a good pitch there. Again, the rain is falling here in Oshawa at Kinsman Stadium. This is the home field of the Durham Lords. As that pitch is taken outside for ball four, so it's a walk. DeCasson loses bath. He goes down to first with the walk, and that'll bring up Hudson Lockwood. Hudson Lockwood in this game has been hit twice. He was hit in the first, and he was hit in the third and later scored. So uh, he's uh, he's been in the action. Two hit by pitch. Runner at first for the Humber Hawks here in the fourth inning. They have an 8-5 lead. Lockwood will look at ball one. Rain still coming down here. A little bit lighter than it was a few minutes ago. There's a ball high, 2-0. and oh. And DeCasson, in this situation, you're, you're still in the game. It's an 8-5 game. But behind Lockwood, you've got now Rebecca to Banning and Wilcox. And there's ball three. You're setting the table and asking for trouble by getting uh, set, getting base runners on when you've got now 
Stephen, now Rebecca, Dennis DeBanning, and Ken Wilcox coming up. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a tough situation it, with uh, the lack of control going on here. It's, uh, you're going to face them at the worst times, it looks like. There's a strike. Three balls and one strike taking all the way was Lockwood. If I was Lockwood, I'd keep the bat on the shoulders here. It hasn't, uh, I mean, he's, he's thrown a lot of balls, not a whole lot of strikes, and I doubt he's going to go back to back. Well, he looked down for the signal from the third base coach. Let's see if he's taking. No, he isn't. He no. pops it up to the third base side, and under it and catching it is Brandon Nieva. So that's the first out of the inning, and that's a, that's a huge out for the Huskies. Two away now instead of one out. So here's Steven Albrecht. Two for three in the ball game. He has a double and a single. He has scored two runs. He comes up here with a runner at first and two away in the bottom of the fourth. In an 8-5 Humber lead. And he will look at ball one from David DeCasson. Hawks looking to add on to a three-run lead here. They escaped a bit of a jam back in the top of this inning where the George Brown Huskies left a couple of runners on base. Here's the 1-0. Fouled. Big cut. 1-1. One one. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a very much a power swing. I think he was trying to make contact with the right field wall. Or maybe go over it. No, that too. <laughs> Put it through it. Maybe right through the wall. That's right. Here's the 1-1. Off speed taken, just misses two one or two balls and a strike. DeCasson wanted that one, and uh, the Huskies were disputing that call. It was close, but uh, the home plate umpire yelling something at one of the Humber players there, or it's rather one of the uh, George Brown players. It was either the shortstop, I think it was the pitcher, but the shortstop was also has been pretty animate about his displeasure for the strike zone this evening. So now Rebecca now with a 3-1 count. This is a clearly a hitter's count. Runner at first, two away. Humber eight, George Brown five, bottom of the fourth. Winner survives and advances to the final four, which begins tomorrow. There's ball four. So, it's the second walk of the inning. That will move Tyrus Bath over to second base. And uh, Dennis DeBanning will be now the batter. He is one for two in the game. He doubled, he struck out looking, and he walked. He has scored a run. OCAA player of the year at the plate right now with runners at first and second and two away. He will take ball one, very high. George Brown Huskies playing with fire here with uh, two on and two away. They need an out, keep this game within reach. Here's the pitch and DeBanning looked, he was gonna turn on it but he checked the swing very nicely, two and oh. Count is two and oh to Dennis DeBanning. Swing and a miss at a pitch that was low. Yeah. Two and one. Don't think that's exactly what he wanted. Probably expecting something right where he wanted it and it, it wasn't there. It was not there. <laughs> Close your eyes and swing. Yeah. He hit five home runs this year. One of the one of the best OCAA players. He's a fifth year player. He's he's been part of Humber's championship teams. This is exactly who they want up at the plate right here. Two and one. And he pops it up. Might be playable on the right side here. And they do not catch it. Aiden Colangelo had it in front of him. And I don't know if it was a, he lost it in the rain, lost it in the lights, or you could hear his catcher come over and say something to him. But boy, you just gave Dennis DeBanning another life. And that's that's that's, uh, that's going to bite him. That's going to bite uh, George Brown. They could have been out of the inning on that play. 
He's Dirt. gonna hit a rocket. I've, uh, I'm calling it now. He's <laughs> gonna hit. A, he's gonna gap one. I'm, yeah, I can already see it. The two-two pitch is ripped right through the middle. Base hit, and that's going to score a run. Here comes Bath to score, and it's an RBI single for Dennis DeBanning. And the George Brown Huskies pay the price for not being able to catch that easy pop-up on the right side. It is now 9-5 Humber. Oh. And when you, <laughs> and then when one danger gets on, another one presents himself. And Cam Wilcox is uh, still a very uh, strong player. And Cam Wilcox, back in the, this game was tied last inning at five. At that point, it was five five. He came up and hit a three run double, and that put Humber in front eight five at the time. It is now nine five. Two, and and uh, Wilcox pops that one to the right side again. A playable ball. And they are not able to catch it. It drops by the second baseman. And now they throw it to third. Everybody is safe. So once again, the Huskies are not able to come up with the ball that they probably should have. And the inning will continue. And by the way, that scores another run. Because uh, now Rebecca was on third. He comes in to score. It's now 10-5. So miscommunication there, second baseman and the right fielder, I think. But uh, Gregory Hall thought he was going to get to it, but he was just not, not in the right position to catch it. And by the time he lunged at it, it was too far away from him. Christian Bakumis was coming in from right field. George Brown's going to talk it over right now. So DeBanning on that play goes all the way to third base. Again, now Rebecca scored so run scored so it's now 10-5 Humber here in the bottom of the fourth inning so again the, the, the Huskies have given a couple of outs and against a, a powerhouse team like this you can't you just cannot make mistakes in a sudden death game like that no you're, you're totally right Brian it's uh, it's tough enough giving a strong team one extra out but I'm pretty sure you can count this inning Two, maybe three outs have just been given away here. It's uh, it's not good to see, and you <laughs> you really are paying the price. <laughs> Aiden Murphy will be the batter now, the second baseman. It's 10-5, Humber. We're in the bottom of the fourth. And he will look at ball one. Runners at first and third here for Humber. So they have trying to cash more and really extend this lead. 10-5 is the score. Murphy in this game is 0 for 1. He struck out in the first. He's been hit by a pitch, and he walked. And he swings at strike one, one and one. David DeCasson got the two pop-ups that he needed as a pitcher. That's, uh, that's also tough for the, the psyche of a pitcher. You know, you get the ball you needed, and your defense doesn't help you. That ball is ripped down the left field line. It is foul, just left of the foul line. That would have scored two runs. Yeah, you're totally right, Brian. If it's uh, it comes down to if your infield, well, actually your defense in general is uh, is not making the basic, the routine plays, you start thinking, man, I have to strike this person out. I have to strike these people out. And really, when you're going for strikeouts, you are going to get hit, and you're going to get hit hard. The one-two pitch is high, ball two. Aiden Murphy, the two-two count. Kem Wilcox is at first. Dennis DeBanning is at third. Runner goes. Pitch is thrown. And it's a strike three called. The inning is over. So the runner was going. But uh, no matter. Ada Murphy strikes out for the second time in the ball game. And the Humber Hawks leave two runners on base. But they do collect two more runs. We've played four innings here in Oshawa at Kinsman Stadium. It is the Humber Hawks 10 and the George Brown Huskies 5. And as we go to the top of the fifth inning, the rain now seems to have lightened up just a little bit. And uh, maybe the worst, maybe, maybe the worst of it is over. 
But uh, the fourth inning was certainly one with uh, co consistent rain. The uh, Humber Hawks scoring two there in the bottom of the fourth inning to go up 10 to five. But Jake, they really, the, the Huskies could have come away with no damage there with a couple of, with a, well, at least that one pop up on the right side. They've caught that, the inning would have been over. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's, it's tough to watch because it is, uh, it could certainly be potentially a 7-5 uh, game. Yeah, if, if not less, if uh, just the routine plays were made by George Brown, there's still plenty of time here for them to change the narrative. But uh, going back, they're going to be wondering what they could have done if uh, they just you know, did the routine. The Huskies uh, gave up four runs in the first inning to the Humber Hawks, and it was 4 nothing after one. George Brown, though, had a huge second inning with five runs on six hits and uh, helped also by one error by the Hawks. And they were leading 5-4 after two. But then the Hawks found their groove in the third inning with four runs to go up 8-5. And then they pushed a, two more runs across the plate just moments ago in the fourth. And that's where we stand. It's 10-5 in favor of Humber. The winner of this game will play tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. We're expecting much colder conditions here in Oshawa as the uh, the rain wants the rain moves through and the temperature is supposed to drop dramatically. And uh, we're expecting game temperatures tomorrow maybe to be uh, no higher than 7 or 8 degrees tomorrow. And right now we're at uh, about 16 Celsius. So it's going to be a little bit different tomorrow. But let's hope the rain holds off the rest of the way. Fifth inning underway here as the George Brown Huskies will lead things off with an infield single. And that was Nathan Pruitt, who uh, popped one that just was behind the pitcher and in front of the shortstop and landed and really the ball just died there in, in, uh, in on the infield and no chance for David Boato and uh, the Huskies have a runner. As a pitcher, you're just gonna kinda have to laugh at that. That's not, it's not a hard hit ball, it's uh, just luck. That's the only way. To, the only way you can describe just luck, and on to the next one. Get a ground ball, double play. There you go. Credit to Pruitt though. Just you know, put the ball in play, make the defense do something. And there's a a pitch, and we have got a balk. Oh, there. You know, we've got some controversy here, as it looks like a balk was called on that pitch, and the uh, Humber Hawks are talking it over with the umpire right now. But uh, no, I don't think there was a pitch on that. I think that was a, a no, no pitch. No pitch. Yeah, box is no pitch. So Nathan Pruitt is balked over to second. So runner at second with nobody out here for Humber, or sorry, rather for George Brown. George Brown in blue. They are trailing this game 10-5. We are in the top of the fifth inning. And the Huskies are the road team in this game. So a single and then a balk by Maxim Skoropodsky. The uh, Humber Hawks did not like that call. You never like a bot call. Ball is low for ball one. No, I, I was I was watching a pitcher as it was called. I couldn't really tell what the balk was. Apparently it was a no stop from. Didn't stop, yeah. Yeah, but uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't think so, but hey. Gregory Hall is the batter. Pitch is high for ball two. Two and oh. Skarpotsky is the third pitcher of the game for Humber. Corey Vandergraaf started it, left the game with an injury in the second. He was relieved by Dylan Cardoso. And now Maxim Skarpotsky is on the mound. And that pitch is in there for a strike two and one. Huskies, all of their runs coming in the second inning. A five run inning. We are now in the top of the fifth. Runner in scoring position, nobody out. Gregory Hall is the batter. He's been hit twice by a pitch in this game. Swings and misses at strike two. So, hit by a pitch in the second and later scored. And hit by a pitch in the third, but was stranded. Two balls and two strikes.
The left-hander, Skoropodsky, looks in for the sign. And here it comes. It's taken, strike three, called. And that's a big first out of the inning for the Hawks. One away, and it brings up Christian Bakumis. And Bakumis is the right fielder, jersey number 19. And he bats from the left side. Bakumis in this game is one for two. He singled and knocked in a run back in the five-run second inning for George Brown. One away, runner at second. Ball is ripped to center field. That's in there for a hit. They are going to send the runner, and he will score easily. It's an RBI for Bakumis, and it is now a 10-6 ball game. That was a no-doubt base hit. Yeah, that was uh, that was ripped right back up the middle towards left uh, left field, left. I'm sorry, burn me left center. Ten to six now. Ten six. So the Huskies trying to claw their way back into it. They they were down four runs after the first inning, came back to take the lead, then fell behind by five. Now they're back down by four again. It's ten six Humber. We are in the top of the fifth. And Manuel Rodriguez is the batter, and he looks at ball one. Fast, it looked like a fastball, but uh, really hit the dirt there, and a nice block by the catcher to prevent that from going by. Christian Bakumis is the runner at first. Just knocked in the sixth run of the game for the Huskies. Rodriguez is ready. Here's the 1-0. Takes it. Thought it was inside, but it's a strike. Mm -hmm. He moved back off the plate, but uh, maybe that was more to try and draw a ball call. Yeah, one it one. looks like it was there. I don't think either team right now is uh, too happy. <laughs> <laughs> that pitch is hit on the ground to first base. Going to be a play for the second baseman. They'll throw it at first to get the out. And that's two away. That'll move Bakumis over to second. So it's a 4-3 ground out for Rodriguez, two away. But going off of uh, what I said previously with uh, not being too happy with the officiating, you know, tensions are running high in a game like this. So really, even one uh, call that could have gone either way will make a team blow up. Well, the Huskies are, are very much in this game still in the fifth inning. They're down 10-6. This is the nine hitter, the catcher. Looks at a strike. Daniel Faraci behind 0-1. He is 0 for 2 in the game. He reached on an error in the second inning, later scored, and he struck out in the fourth. 10-6, Humber leading over the Huskies. That ball is popped foul out of play behind the plate, 0-2. Huskies have a runner at second here. And if Farachi can reach, that would bring up the top of the order again for the Huskies. Christian Bakumis is the runner at second base. Maxim Skoropodsky is ready with the pitch. He fires it in there, and it's knocked away. Foul. Still 0-2. Again, the regular season, the Humber Hawks were 11-3 in the regular season. The George Brown Huskies were 3-11. And, and I believe Humber scored 90 runs more during the regular season than the Huskies. So on paper... You know, you look at the records, you look at the statistics, but still have to play the game. And the Huskies are making a game of it. Full credit. They are, absolutely. That pitch is high for ball one. One and two to Daniel Faraci. If he can reach, that would bring up Kyle Bandura, leadoff hitter, with a couple of runners on base. Here comes the one, two. Swung on and missed for strike three. So a couple of strikeouts in that inning for Maxim Skoropodsky. And the Huskies leave a runner, but they do score one. And at the end of four and a half innings, 
it is the Humber Hawks 10 and the George Brown Huskies 6. So as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning now here in Oshawa at Kinsman Civic Memorial Stadium, it's Brian Oliver along with Jacob Ebbs. Glad you could join us from wherever you may be watching across the province or even farther afield on this live stream. And uh, OCAA 2021 Men's Baseball Championship. This is a quarterfinal game. This is a sudden death game. The winner will advance to the final four. Uh, the final four part of the tournament is a double knockout format. But uh, tonight's game is a, is a sudden death game. Have to win. If you don't win, you're done. And the George Brown Huskies and the Humber Hawks have really put on an interesting show so far tonight. We've seen the, the pendulum swing back and forth a few times in this game. Humber with four runs to take an early lead. Then they went down 5-4 after two. Then up 8-5. Tacked on two more runs in the fourth. But George Brown struck for one there in the fifth inning. And it's a 10-6 game with Humber coming up now in the bottom of the fifth inning and you know Humber again probably very high high heavy favorites coming into this game but uh, but uh, George Brown has, has stuck around mm -hmm. they have yeah it's um, you know I I, I think uh, I didn't give George Brown the full credit that uh, they probably deserve coming into this game just looking at uh, just very simply the stats on paper you just already see yeah well this one team's got four all-stars, one team has none. One team has, uh, well, I mean, uh, what was the run differential compared to teams? It was 90, I 90. believe you said, right? So it's, you got a full powerhouse against uh, a team that is just trying to get themselves, uh, you know, start into the OCA. I do think, though, that, uh, you know, the way this, after the first inning, it, it, it four nothing, Humber getting four runs in the first inning, felt like they could have even had more, but they got, they don't, they, they only gave up those four runs, and it, but it, it felt like it was going to be a quick blowout. Yeah. And George Brown, um, to their credit, got right back up off the mat and answered with five runs in the second inning. So that was very impressive. Yeah, if you, if you pull away that first inning, it's, uh, it's a tie ball game. So bottom of the fifth inning now, Justin Raspanti will be the leadoff batter for the Humber Hawks. He is one for three in the ball game. And he will lift that ball behind short and in front of left field. And it's one of those bloopers between the infield and the outfield. Base hit. Nice hit. And Raspanti is the leadoff runner aboard for Humber here in the fifth inning. Second hit of the ball game for Raspanti. He has a double and a single. And that will bring up David Boato, the shortstop. Humber certainly looking to add on here if they can uh, in, this, in this fifth inning. You can see a very hazy sky here as uh, Boato takes strike one. The rain has tapered off for the moment. It is getting a little bit foggy, and you can see that through the lights. What a beautiful picture, though. Just looking at the live stream, what a great picture we have there. As Boato swings and fouls away, strike two. Yeah, it, uh, the, the lighting is pretty cool. They, they look like umbrellas mm -hmm. uh, sort of hovering over the field, huge umbrellas. But uh, it is a little bit foggy even at ground level, and... Uh, yeah, it does. The fog, uh, whether that becomes an issue or not, it's. Uh, I think everybody can see what's going on. But when you're way out in the outfield like that, it, uh, you know, we we can see them. They, it looks a little hazy for them uh, from from this vantage point. So it probably looks a little hazy coming into the plate. Count is a ball and two strikes to David Boato. He is 0 for two in the game. That ball is hit hard to right field. Right fielder's giving chase. Not going to get it. Over his head. Boato is going to second. The runner on first is coming around and will know he will stop at third. So it's a double. 
a big double for Boato, and it's two on, runners at second and third with nobody out. Well, what a great start for Humber this uh, this bottom half. Runners in second and third, no one out. Bottom half, bottom part of the order, they got, I think, seven, eight, nine yep. right now. Yeah, Robert Champion is now coming to the plate, and uh, he is... He's been on base twice. He's technically 0 for 1 in the game. He grounded out to second, but he's been hit twice. And so he's uh, he's been he's been on base twice in the game. And he comes up in a situation here to really try and extend the lead for the, the Hawks. They are leading at 10 to 6. Nobody out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And there are runners. Runners at second and uh, third and looks like the Huskies were appealing whether or not the uh, whether or not uh, Justin Raspanti touched second as he went over to third but uh, the appeal is declined and second and third nobody out champion will pop that one to the left side might be playable and it's not it hits the top of the George Brown dugout about three or four feet out of the reach of Brandon Nieva the third third baseman for the George Brown Huskies. Close, just if it had stayed just a little, a few more feet to the, toward the, the, the fair fair territory. Yeah, it might have been playable. Third base was uh, there ready to make it. It was just, uh, just out of reach. Big swing and a miss by Champion. Quick, quickly down 0 2. Great pitch, though. Again, David DeCasson on in relief in this game from Michael. Gordero. That ball is hit and la nice diving catch by Brady Wagenhofer on a line drive that just about got past him, but he had to extend full to haul that in and keep it in the infield. But that's a, a big out, one away. Yeah, great play there. If that uh that would have at least scored a run if uh even if they knocked that one down, it would be a very tough play to gather himself, go against his body, and make a throw there. So there's a first out of the inning for the Huskies. That ball is ripped into center field. That's going to score at least one run. It might score two. Here comes the second run. They will throw it to the infield. They cut it off. It's a two-run single by Tyrus Bath, the catcher. And it is now a 12-6 ball game. So Justin Respanti and David Boato come in on that hit to center field. 12-6 Humber. The mountain just got a lot higher for the George Brown Huskies with that hit. 12-6 now, bottom of the fifth inning. The batter is Hudson Lockwood, third baseman. He will take strike one. Tried to duck down and maybe squeeze the zone there, but it was called a strike. Pretty tall, left-handed hitter. He is 0 for 1 in the game. He's been hit twice by a pitch and popped out the third. That ball is lifted to center field, left center. They've got a play on it. It is caught in center field for the second out of the inning. Kyle Bandura making the play there and two away. I think that one there, the Hayes might have come into it just a little bit. You saw that outfielder take a few extra seconds just to kind of like, am I under? All right, perfect, I'm under. Let's go. And the lighting is, is the, the lighting is excellent at, at Kinsman Stadium, but uh, with the haze and the fog overhanging, it uh, balls up in the air. It just makes it a little more difficult to see. But a good play by Kyle Bandura for the second out of the inning. So here's Steven Navrabecki for his fifth plate appearance of the game. And he pops that one to the left side. Playable for the third baseman, Nieva. He's got it, and the inning is over. So, could have been more, but it is a two-run inning for the Humber Hawks in the fifth. So, five complete, and we have a score of Humber 12, George Brown 6.
We go to the sixth inning here at Kinsman Stadium in Oshawa. Brian Oliver along with Jacob Ebbs. Sudden death game between the Humber Hawks and the George Brown Huskies. It's a 12-6 lead for the Hawks. Humber with four runs in the first, four in the third, two in the fourth, two in the fifth. The bat's really alive for them tonight, as they have been all season for the Humber Hawks. George Brown with five runs in the second to briefly take a 5-4 lead in this game. They also brought a run home in the fifth inning, and we are at a 12-6 count as we go to the sixth inning. New pitcher in the ball game is Ian Swartz for the Humber Hawks. Made two appearances during the regular season and is a second-year pitcher. Through uh, tossed three innings, uh, no earned run average, had an earned run average of zero, but not a lot of data. Uh, gave up a hit, gave up a run, struck out three and walked one during um, his two appearances in the regular season for the Hawks. Hawks 12, Huskies 6. Winner of this game will play tomorrow at 11 o'clock here at Kinsman Stadium in the first game of the double knockout round of part of the tournament against the Seneca Sting, the East Division champions. That'll be followed at approximately 1.30 tomorrow afternoon in the second game between the Durham Lords, which defeated the Fanshawe Falcons earlier this evening by a score of 6-4. to four. And the Lords will take on the St. Clair Saints, the winners of the West Division, with a record of 12-2. and two. So five teams still alive, and after this game we'll be down to the final four. Zwartz is ready, and we will go to the sixth inning. It'll be the top of the order for the George Brown Huskies, starting with Kyle Bandura, and he looks at ball one. So if you're the Huskies at this point, you're just trying to get some base runners, try and, try and recapture some of the magic. They've had some success in this game. Yeah, they definitely have. It's uh, I think it's going to come down to just start chipping away. You know what? You don't need all six now. You can do three and three or three and four. You know, there's a lot of ways you can get six. I can't count all the ways because I'm not that bright, but hey. <laughs> you can count to six. Uh, okay, maybe that's know. asking too much. Yeah. <laughs> Vandura takes a strike, two balls and a strike. Leading off the sixth inning. Bandura is 0 for 2 in the game. Looks like he was going to call time there, and he doesn't. And he takes high, ball three. Three and one appears to be the count, and Tyrus Bath is going to go out and talk to Ian Zwartz about the situation right now. Scoreboard says two and one. I think it's a three and one count, but uh, again, maybe I can't count either. Hey, you know what? That's why we're here, right? Uh, I was hoping I could get to at least three. <laughs> <laughs> Bandura, as I mentioned, is 0 for 2 in the ball game. He's struck out, reached on a fielder's choice, and scored in the second. And he walked in the fourth. Here's the pitch. Takes it for a strike. Count is three balls and two strikes, so I was correct. That's very reassuring to me. Absolutely. 3-2 pitch is taken, and it's taken for strike three. Bandura thought he had the walk. He walks dejectedly back to the dugout, one away. Yeah, I, uh, uh-oh. Umpire taking a little bit of heat there from the George Brown dugout. He glares at them. They glare back, and we move on. It's a lovely little chin wag between the two. <laughs> Brandon Nieve is the batter now for the Huskies. And he looks at strike one. Nieve in this game is one for two. He doubled. Knocked in two runs back in the second inning for the Humber Hawks. Or sorry, for the George Brown Huskies when they scored. As he swings and misses at strike two, he... Two-run double back in the in the second inning in a five-run inning for the Huskies. He's also walked. He's down 0-2 here now to Ian Swartz, the new pitcher, fourth pitcher of the game for the Hawks. That ball is on the ground to third base. Tough play for Lockwood. He throws it onto first and not going to make the play. And that's an infield single for Nieva. And... 
a much needed base runner for the Huskies. Yeah, it does. It provides a little bit of life. Even though that ball wasn't uh, hit on a line or anything like that, single still goes down as single. So this provides a good opportunity for them and see what they can do. That brings up Aiden Colangelo, the number three hitter, and really the, uh, the best hitter of the season for the Huskies. He is one for three in this ball game with strikeout, a single, and reached on a fielder's choice. Nev is the base runner at first. He lifts that ball right side, foul, out of play, strike one. Humber Hawks in white, George Brown Huskies in blue. We are in the top of the sixth inning. It is a 12-6 lead for the Humber Hawks. George Brown looking to close the gap here. Here's the 0-1. Fouled. And it looks like the rain has tapered off now, which is great news. Has brought some uh, cooler temperatures with us, absolutely. Definitely dropped a few degrees so far in this game. We did get up to 17 degrees at one point, but we're not going to see that again for a while, if at all, this winter <laughs> or this fall. Maybe. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Pop to the right side. Might be playable. Might be playable for Cam Wilcox. He's got it. And Colangelo is retired. Second out of the inning. Two away, and that'll bring up Brady Wagenhofer. Number 13. Bats on the right side. Huskies with a runner at first here. Two away, though, in the top of the sixth inning. They are down 12-6. Takes ball one. Wagenhofer in this game is one for three. He singled and scored in the, in the second inning, and he is a couple flyouts to the outfield. Brandon Nieves, the runner at first. He reached on an infield single. Here's the 1-0. Misses for ball two. The Hawks were trailing this game 5-4 after two innings, but bounce back for four in the third, two in the fourth, and two in the fifth. Zwartz's pitch misses, ball three. If Wagenhofer can reach, Nathan Pruitt, the DH, awaits on deck. Here's a 3-0. And he's swinging away at the 3-0 pitch. Wow. And that ball goes down the right field line and giving a chance, uh, Robert Champion gave it an effort but was not able to bring it in. So the at-bat will continue. Three balls and one strike now to Brady Wagenhofer. And looking at the ra looking at the way the, the weather radar right now, it looks like we've seen the worst of it, and I there might not be much behind it. So I think I don't think we're going to see any more rain tonight. So we dodge that one. There's ball four to Wagenhofer. That'll move Nieva over to second base. A lot of close pitches that at bat though. Nathan Pruitt comes up now. He is two for three in the ball game with a couple of singles and a couple of runs scored. Huskies. Zwartz came on in this game, uh, in this inning. Struck out the first batter looking, but has since given up a walk and a hit. Misses again, ball three. Now 3-0 and oh in this situation. You taking this pitch? Absolutely. Bat is not going off my shoulder. Here's a 3-0 -oh from Zwartz. It's in there for a strike. Hey, 
George Brown looking to get get another runner on base here. Maybe try and cut into this 12-6 Humber lead. Here's the 3-1. It's low. It gets away for ball four. But uh, it's, it's even though it's a wild pitch, it was just ball four anyway, and a, it bounced right back to the catcher. But the bases are loaded now with two out, and that's going to bring a mound visit. Yeah, you can really see the uh, the control of the, the Humber pitcher here has faded. He, he's, uh, he's going out there and he was talking about his, his cleat. I think it, the mound might be just uh, be muddy. But, and it, uh, yeah, and you're right, uh, Jake. We're going to see. I think the ground groundkeeper come out with some more uh, some more dirt here, and uh, we'll maybe have a bit of a delay here. But the George Brown Huskies have loaded the bases with two out here in the top of the sixth inning, trailing 12 to six. The game that they were keeping it close there after. Uh, well, they were leading the game after two innings, five to four. Surrendered the lead, but uh, got it back to eight five. And then ten six. Now it's down twelve six. Oh, well, maybe it's okay. Maybe it's not going to be. They're bringing out dirt, but they're just bringing out some kind of uh, it looks like spike the, or a broken bat the or something. The barrel of a broken bat. Well, oh, that'll work. Scraping out the dirt, so you can see the big, the big gathering. Got about 10 people out on the mound right now. That's not social distancing. <laughs> Someone call public health. They're going to kick the dirt out of his cleats. And looks like it's good. So, yeah, that, in fact, is the broken sh <laughs> broken part of a bat. Looks like a shiv. <laughs> it's, uh, it's creative use of, of broken equipment anyway. Absolutely. You don't usually see a broken bat come into the field like that. But uh, very creative. So we've got bases loaded here for George Brown. And as the wind picks up a little bit, the, the fog is clearing a little bit as well. It's a lot more clear now in the uh, in the air here at Kinsman Stadium. So 12-6, bases loaded, two out. And Zwartz misses with the first pitch to Gregory Hall. And it's 1-0. Hall in this game has been hit by a pitch twice and he struck out looking. Here's the 1-0. Very high, ball two. Huskies looking for some runs here in the top of the sixth inning to try and claw into this six-run Humber lead. And here is the 2-0 pitch. It's inside, 3-0. So now the Huskies a ball away from bringing in a run here. This might be, uh, hey, you know what? A run is a run. They will take anything. Here's the 3-0. Takes it for a strike. Similar pattern to the last batter, Nathan Pruitt, who went 3-0, took, took a strike, but then walked on the fifth pitch. Let's see what happens this time with Ian Swartz, the pitcher. He is high, ball four, that walks in a run. And now is a 12-7 game. I think we Humber might leading. see a pitching change at this point. So coming in to score is Brandon Nieva. So one run here for George Brown in the sixth inning. It is now Humber 12 and George Brown 7. Very high scoring game. Hope you took the over in this game. Yeah, yeah. Big cut there by Christian Bakumis. Strike one. I think you had to expect, maybe not from uh, George Brown, but you had to expect yes. almost an onslaught by Humber. Yeah, it's not, yeah. Humber scoring 12 runs. They've, they've, they've done that many times this year. Swing and a miss, strike two. Bakumis trying to launch that one but swung over it, 0-2. Bases are loaded here for George Brown. Big opportunity, but there are two away. Really not sure if I agree with uh, the approach by him here, and considering he's walked the bases, walked a run in, and he's uh, he's going right at. Ball is hit to the right side, foul. So it remains 0-2. Well, that's a good point, Jake. I mean, 
Zwartz has walked the last three batters. And then quickly gets up 0-2 on the next. Maybe Chris it took a while for the uh, mound meeting to work. The 0-2 pitch to Bakumis. Here it comes. It's high. Ball one. One ball and two strikes. Bakumis in this game is two for three. He's got a couple of singles. Looking for another one here. It would be a big one. 12-7's the score. Here's the pitch. He swings and misses. Strike three, and he tosses the bat away in frustration as the inning is over. So, the George Brown Huskies score one in the top of the sixth, and it is now a 12-7 ball game. Humber 12, George Brown 7 as we move to the bottom of the sixth inning. And as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, we see the grounds keeper coming out onto the field to put some of the diamond dry on the mound to try and absorb some of the moisture from the rain that fell during the fourth inning. And uh, they're going to rake that up here. So we're going to have a slight delay before we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. It is a 12-7 lead for the Humber Hawks. And the, the scoreboard... Lots of numbers, lots of crooked numbers on the scoreboard, that's for sure. Humber with four in the first, four in the third, two in the fourth, two in the fifth. And for the Huskies, five runs in the second and single runs in the fifth and the sixth inning, which just ended a moment ago. And we have a new pitcher coming into the ball game for the George Brown Huskies. So DeCassin's Night is over on the mound, and it'll bring on Riley Anand. Or Anand, sorry. Uh, Riley Anand will come on, the right-hander. And for this season, posted a very good earned run average of 2.1. Made six appearances. Started one game. Six strikeouts. So... The George Brown Huskies more or less going with their top three pitchers in this ball game. Michael Guardiaro started it, gave gave over to David DeCasson, and now in the sixth inning it'll be Riley and Ann. Huskies 12. Huskies trailing 12-7 to the Hawks. Again, the Humber Hawks are... Two-time defending champions. In the OCAA, they won the gold medal in 2018 and 2019. George Brown looking for its first OCAA medal, but they're going to need a big seventh inning, and they're going to need to hold the Husk or the Hawks here in the in the bottom of the sixth inning. And for the Hawks, it'll be the two, three, four hitters: Dennis DeBanning, Cam Wilcox, and Aiden Murphy. So. Tall order. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Humber the Humber Hawks have, again, come as advertised as far as the offense goes. Uh, they're, they're, they're solid top to bottom. And they've hit the ball hard. And uh, they've, they've taken advantage uh, of, of a couple of opportunities that George Brown gave them earlier on in the game as well. And, and that's what good teams do. No, absolutely. You're totally right there, Brian. It's, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> I think it's going to be a Sinclair uh, Humber final. Yeah, if, you know, if we're hard to get it, unless uh, something else uh, happens. So it's Dennis DeBanning. He will look at ball one from Riley Anand. Banning in this game is he's got two hits he's walked struck out looks at ball two scored a run back in the first inning he doubled in the first run of the ball game 
but then was picked off second by Michael Guardiero. The 2-0 pitch and DeBanning steps out, so we'll we'll reset here. The rain has stopped and uh, certainly the fog is starting to clear a bit, so uh, good, good playing conditions. Unfortunately, the rain did not cause huge trouble that it looked like it was going to, the way the, the radar was was coming towards Oshawa, it looked like we were gonna see some heavy rain, but it, uh, it ended up only being moderate at worst and it didn't last all that long, so that's good. No, exactly, I was a little worried just looking over at uh, the Doppler radar you had out there earlier on, and didn't look pretty, but uh, we got lucky. So DeBanning walks on four straight pitches. Leadoff runner is aboard for Humber. Here in the bottom of the sixth inning, they have a 12-7 lead. And Cam Wilcox will be the batter. He is two for three in the ball game. A couple of singles. Reached on an error, scored a run in the first, but he had a huge, that, that, sorry, a single and a double, but that double back in the, in the third inning was a huge one. Cleared the bases with bases loaded and he hit a double. That turned a 5-5 game into an 8-5 Humber lead. Wilcox fouls the first pitch away. It's 0-1. So yeah, you look back at, uh, at moments in the game, certainly Wilcox's uh, plate appearance in the third inning with the bases loaded was, was a huge one. And they have not surrendered the lead since that point. Oh, it really has, definitely one of the, the turning points of the game. Here's the 0-1, ripped hard, but it's foul to the left side. I think Wilcox needs to move up a few steps on the plate. He was early on it, hit it hard right on the screws, but uh, pulled it way left and rolled all the way down to the far left corner where the uh, George Brown bullpen is. 0-2 now, the count to Cam Wilcox. DeBanning is the runner at first, jumping around out there. And that pitch is going to be behind the plate and not no chance there for Daniel Farace. count remains no balls and two strikes Humber looking to advance to tomorrow's second round if they are able to hold on to this they will face the Seneca Sting at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning here on the live stream here's the 0-2 taken low for ball one Close pitch there. Yeah, it was a good pitch. Low at the knees, you just you never know with two strikes. It, uh, but uh, Wilcox resisted the temptation to go after it. Count is one and two. And And is ready. Runner goes, pitches a ball. They throw down to second. DeBanning is in there in plenty of time. It's a stolen base. So now a runner at second with nobody out for Humber. And a two and two count to Aiden Murphy. Here's the two, two pitch. It is hit to third base. Third baseman comes up with it, throws on to first and they get the out. DeBanning will go with the throw down to third base. So the runner advances and Murphy is retired five to three. Long throw for the third baseman, and to, you know at this point you, you got to take the out, got to take the sure out. Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to question. You want to take uh, any chances. That was a good play, considering probably the grass is still pretty wet. He was able to make a strong throw, no problem. Brendan Nieva making that throw from third, by the way. As the batter comes up, it's Aiden Murphy, veteran Humber Hawk, part of the championship teams in 2018 and 2019. 
Count is 0-1. Runner at third, one away. Pitch is low. Murphy in this game has been hit by a pitch. He's walked and he's struck out twice. The 1-1, one, one. big cut, misses it, one and two. Trying to bring in the 13th run of the game for Humber here in the bottom of the sixth inning. It is a 12-7 lead for Humber if you just joined us. The 1-2 pitch from Anand is fouled. Looking ahead to the seventh inning for the George Brown Huskies, it'll be the eight, nine, and one hitters. And they are hoping that they are not trailing by more than five runs. Humber looking to add on here. Here's the one, two again. Off speed and misses. Two and two. Comes the 2-2 again, and it is hit to right field. That is probably deep enough to score a run. Christian Bakumis catches it and will throw it home, but it is a sacrifice fly for Aiden Murphy. And another run comes in for Humber at 13-7 now here in the bottom of the sixth inning. So it's an RBI for Murphy. And the Hawks add on and increase their lead to six. Justin Respanti will be the batter. Designated hitter in this game. That ball is hit to left center field and the center fielder makes an incredible wow. diving catch. Kyle Bandura ran a mile to get to that ball and made a spectacular catch. Great job to end the inning. That might be one of the plays of the tournament right there. Probably will be, actually. That was a great play by the center fielder, Kyle Bandura, and we will see him, third, uh, the third batter, coming up in, this, in the uh, seventh inning here for George Brown. So in the sixth inning, it's one run on the sacrifice fly by Aiden Murphy. Nobody left. And at the end of six, it is the Humber Hawks, 13, and the George Brown Huskies, 7. I think it might be a new pitcher out there. We go to the seventh inning, and no, it's Ian, Ian Swartz will continue. He came on in the sixth inning for the uh, for the Hawks, so Ian Swartz will continue on the mound for Humber here to try and close things down here in the seventh inning with the George Brown Huskies trailing thirteen to seven. But uh, in a game that that is, had, had some early swings, particularly uh, in that second inning when George Brown scored five runs and held the lead for a while. Um, the Huskies have, have hung in there. And, and I think it's, uh, it's great testament to their, to, the, to, to their program because even if they aren't able to come back in this game, this is a good takeaway for them in the off season as they look ahead to the 2022 season. Yeah, you know, it's uh, absolutely, you really did not expect George Brown to uh, come out the way they have, at least in uh, so far against a powerhouse such as Humber. So really, you know what? They might not win this game, but it uh, goes to show that they don't give up. So we go to the, bot the top of the seventh inning. Last chance for George Brown here. And the batter is Manuel Rodriguez. He looks at ball one. Rodriguez, the left fielder in this game, is 0 for 3. He reached on a fielder's choice back in the second inning, the five-run inning for the Huskies. Also has a couple of ground outs. He looks at ball two from Ian Zwartz. 
Huskies looking for base runners. Try and get something going here in the seventh inning. They trail 13 to seven to the two time defending champion Humber Hawks. That pitch is in there for a strike two and one. Daniel Faraci, the catcher, waits on deck. And then Kyle Bandura will follow. Bandura making that amazing catch in center field just a short time ago as Rodriguez looks at ball three. Three and one. Humber not looking to give away free bases here with the six run lead. No, exactly. It, their game plan is just to go after the hitters and uh, you know what, just if they make outs, they make easy outs, easy outs. That pitch was in there for a strike, so the count is full now to Manuel Rodriguez. And he will look at ball four low, and the Huskies have the first runner aboard here in the top of the seventh inning, trailing 13-7. And it'll be Daniel Ferris at the plate for George Brown in this game. He's, he's 0 for 3, a couple of strikeouts. And he reached on an error and scored in the second inning. He looks at ball one. Base runner is Manuel Rodriguez at first. Huskies looking for runners here. Trying to cut into a 13-7 deficit. Very high for ball two. And that will bring Tyrus Batho to talk to his catcher to try and settle him down. Looking back at the last inning, uh, he walked three consecutive batters. Uh, Ian Swartz did. Yeah, I think this conversation is just, uh, listen, you know what, if you have to take a few miles off the fastball, do it. It's it's not, we're not trying to walk, guys. We're not trying to even give them a chance. Let them hit the ball. You have a superb defense all around. Just throw it low. Let's see what happens. Here's the 2-0. Very high. Ooh. Oh, it came up and hit the batter in the helmet. Looked like it caught him almost around the chin or the, Neck, but uh, he's he's okay. He runs down to first very quickly. But, uh, boy, that came up high right up at the head. Very, very alarming when you see a, a ball come in like that. And it was that was not a, an off-speed pitch. There were a lot of hit batters in this ball game. And, you know, maybe, again, the conditions are you know, a little bit slippery, a little bit moist out there. We've had rain. The, the grass is wet. There's a lot of conditions. It's a, it's a very much polar opposite to the first game we saw in Durham College versus uh, the Fanshawe Falcons, where it was, uh, for the most part, it was uh, really a pitching duel. And I, I, don't, I don't think there's any walked uh, batters or anything like that. Looking back, yeah, yeah, I don't know. There may have been, there may have been one, one or two, maybe, but uh, I don't, I don't think uh, Jason Cross threw any walks for the, uh, for the Durham Lords. So here we go. And the batter is Kyle Bandura. He looks at ball one. And the, the Huskies here have runners at first and second. Nobody out. They're down 13 to 7. But uh, looking to set the table here for maybe something more as the, the heart of the order is scheduled to come up. Bandura is the leadoff hitter. In this game, he is 0 for 3. He walked. He scored a run. A couple of strikeouts. Here's the 1-0. Misses, ball Ooh, two. Wow. Two balls and no strikes as Ian Swartz is, is just not finding the zone right now or else, uh, you know, barely missing. That one seemed to be pretty close. That one, I think, was in the zone. <laughs> Here's the 2-0. That pitch misses for ball three. And we have had an ejection. And the umpire has thrown out somebody from the bench on the Humber Hawks right now with a 3-0 and count. And the umpire is... Uh, 
Okay. Well, we've uh, Humber Hawks have uh, lost their cool on the bench right now, and somebody was arguing, arguably close pitches, but uh, but giving the umpire a bit of a, a rough ride there. So somebody's been tossed. We don't know who it was, but uh, would assume it was the pitching coach there. <laughs> Yeah, maybe so. So anyway, we've got a 3-0 count here. Nobody out. Runners at first and second. Ian Zwartz will toss that in there for strike one. 3-1. The Bronx cheer comes from the Humber fans here. I, uh, <laughs> I thought that was relatively same zone. <laughs> <laughs> the count is three balls and one strike to Kyle Bandura. And he will hit that ball to left field. Left fielder going back. For it, will haul it in. Great catch. Had to go a long way. Dennis to Banning. Had to go almost all the way to the warning track on that one. One away. He was almost like jogging backwards as he was doing. I'm not really too sure about the efficiency there, but uh, made the play nonetheless. So Bandura is retired with a long, deep fly to second base or to, to left field. And that will bring up the number two hitter, Brandon Nieva. And Nieva in this game has a couple of hits, a single and a double. Scored a run, has also struck out. First and second, one away here for the Huskies. Top of the seventh inning, 13-7 is the score in favor of Humber. And it's 2-0. Oh. There's Ian Zwartz. Falling behind again to the batter. Huskies looking for more base runners here as they trail by six. Pitch misses for ball three, three and oh. Ball seems to be at the right height. I guess it's just off the plate. It's just outside, but uh, I mean, in, in the defense of the umpire, if it's if the guy's not finding the zone, he's not going to give you the ones that are, you know, on yeah. the corners or anything like that. You have to show that you're pumping the zone. There's a strike, three and one. So Zwartz working here against Brandon Nieva. Waiting on deck is Aiden Colangelo, the best hitter for the Huskies this season. Here's a three one. It is low. Ball four, and the bases are loaded. That'll move up Ferris to second, and Rodriguez will move all the way to third. And we're going to see a mound visit, and the Humber coaches have seen enough, and Ian Zwartz is out of the game. And we will now see the fifth pitcher of the game for Humber, so Humber really having to having to tap into their pitching staff in this game. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be a bit of a detriment to them going on uh, going forward this weekend. Hopefully, really they've only had one pitcher kind of go long, and that was uh, Ian Zwartz, I think. I'm not sure how many innings. Um, they started with Corey Vandergraaf, and yeah. he got injured in the second inning. Dylan Cardoso pitched a couple of innings, and then Maxim uh, Skoropodsky, and then Ian Zwartz. And the fifth pitcher of the ball game for Humber will be the right-hander. And it is Cam Hibbs. And Cam Hibbs is a veteran. He's a fourth-year player. And has been around the the crucial games that uh, Humber has, has played in the playoffs in, in recent years. So Hibbs will try and put this fire out here in the seventh inning as the Hawks have a 13 to seven lead, but the George Brown Huskies have the bases loaded with one out and their top hitter, Aiden Colangelo coming to the plate. Yeah, I think at this point, uh, Black is just kind of going with one of his better guys. Just, hey, you know what? Just get us two outs, please. <laughs> Shut it down. Now, a base hit or two could make things very interesting if the uh, if the Huskies are able to put a couple more hits together here and cut into the lead. It is a six-run lead, so it's a pretty safe lead. Mm -hmm. 
And also, too, you're not dealing with, with, with bad conditions. The fog is lifted, much clearer conditions right now, and the rain has stopped. And the, the rain that we had in the fourth inning, maybe that had a bit of an impact on, um, on the pitchers in the middle part of the game. And Humber also is very experienced. They're, 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 not, you know, they're, they're not used to a lot of close games this year. They've had a lot of blowout games, no question about that. But over the years... A lot of these players have played in a lot of big games, and so there is a lot of experience on the field right now for the Hawks. Yeah, absolutely. There's a number of uh, maybe not leaders, but uh, just experienced veterans. They, uh, you said it well. They've been in these situations. They've probably have been in numerous situations where they've been up by a lot, down by a lot, down by a few, up by a few. Heck, even Todd going into extras. So you know what? I think uh, no matter what, they're covered. But they also probably didn't expect to be even maybe play even playing a seventh inning in a game like this, no. thinking maybe that they would have mercied uh, earlier on. But uh, that's not the case. So the George Brown Huskies have a chance here. One away, top of the seventh inning, and it's Aiden Colangelo facing Cam Hibbs. Runners at first, second, and third. Huskies look like uh, they've got Good speed out at second. The base hit might score a couple of runs here. Hibbs' pitch is high for ball one. Strikes, strikes, strikes. <laughs> it's also oh <so> easy. <laughs> also easy. Here's the 1 0 pitch from Cam Hibbs, and it is fouled to the right side, 1 and 1. Colangelo in this game does have a hit. He is one for four. He singled back in the second inning. He has struck out. He's reaching a fielder's choice, and he popped out to the catcher. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Low, 2-1. and one. The Huskies all up on their bench right now, cheering on their teammates. Hoping to extend things here with more base runners. 13-7 is the score in favor of Humber. Here's the 2-1, low in the dirt. And Tyrus Bath makes sure that it doesn't get away. Three and one. Colangelo with a good count here. Let's see what he does. Here comes the pitch from Hibbs. It is grounded. Hibbs will get it at second, or at pitcher, and he will run to first to record <laughs> the out, and a run scores. But the Humber Hawks will certainly take the out in that situation. Oh, absolutely. No matter what, just getting that we can, uh, they can deal with the runs. So it's an RBI for Colangelo, and it's now second and third with two out. And the score is now 13 to eight in favor of Humber. The batter is Brady Wagenhofer. Pitch is high and inside for ball one. Wagenhofer is one for three in the ball game. Singled and scored in the second. Couple of flyouts and he's got a walk. Second and third here for the Huskies. Two away. They trail 13-8. Pitch is high, ball two. Hibbs trying to get Wagenhofer to chase something high. Hasn't done it, and he's got a 2-0 and o count now. Nathan Pruitt awaits on deck if Wagenhofer reaches. 13-8, Humber. George Brown looking for a rally here in the seventh inning. Here's the 2-0. Ground ball to third base to short. They will throw on to first, and they get him at first. Great play by the infield to end the game as David Boato makes a great running throw to get Wagenhofer at first. The game is over, and the Humber Hawks win it 13-8. And certainly an interesting game and a, a 
probably even though 13-8 doesn't seem like a close game, this game did feel pretty close because the George Brown Huskies really put a put up a strong effort in this game. And 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 as we were talking about earlier, they have something that carries them through to 20 to 22. Yeah, you know what? Uh, all credit to George Brown there. They uh, they played incredibly well. I think in the eyes of Humber, it's uh, it's a win. It's a very ugly win. But uh, you know why it gets a job done and gets them uh, off into uh, gets them a key into the tournament. So the Humber Hawks win at 13 to eight. We'll get the players of the game in just a moment uh, as the players line up on the field and uh, George Brown's season comes to an end with a 13 to eight loss. Humber will advance. They will play the first game tomorrow at 11 o'clock and they will face the Seneca Sting here at Kinsman Stadium. And that will be followed by the second game of the double knockout part of the tournament, the Durham Lords will take on the St. Clair Saints at 1.30. The winners of those first games tomorrow will will play tomorrow night at 6.30. The losers of those first two games tomorrow will play in an elimination game at 4 o'clock. So these were sudden death games today, and tomorrow the, the tournament moves to a double knockout format. So you lose twice, and you're, you're, you can, you're allowed one loss and after that you're eliminated. So the final four teams are the Seneca Sting, the St. Clair Saints, who are the division champions, and they will be joined by the Humber Hawks and the Durham Lords tomorrow here at Kinsman Stadium. So before we uh, sign things off in a moment, we'll just let you know who the players of the game are, and we're just waiting for that announcement. But uh, Jake, for, for, from Humber's standpoint, as you say, you take the win, but uh, they had to use five pitchers tonight. Yeah. They got a lot, of, and they they want to win the championship. And if they're going to go deep in the tournament, uh, they they took a few hit points in this game. Yeah, they truly did. I'm not too sure how large uh, the rosters are, but I believe it's around 25. Um, majority of those guys are pitchers, probably around like 50-50 actually, or maybe a little more than that, being pitchers. Uh, you run into the bullpen like that. How Humber had to do tonight. It, uh, it really does limit the coach's options of, all right, who am I going to go? Who am I going to go to, hypothetically, if uh, things do not go perfectly? Brandon Nieva is the player of the game for the George Brown Huskies, the third baseman. He hit a double, a couple walks, and a single. Cam Wilcox is the player of the game for the Humber Hawks, and you look back to that to that third inning when he came up with the bases loaded and hit a huge double that cleared the bases and put Humber in front to stay. And so Cam Wilcox, uh, well-deserving player of the game. Absolutely, yeah. He had a great game and uh, really took advantage of that bases loaded situation. So that will do it for day one here at the OCAA 2021 Men's Baseball Championship. Again, recapping the scores today, the Humber Hawks winning this game 13-8 to over the George Brown Huskies. The Huskies are eliminated. Earlier, it was the Durham Lords beating the Fanshawe Falcons 6-4, to knocking out the Falcons from the tournament. So tomorrow again at 11 o'clock, it'll be Humber against Seneca at 11 o'clock, followed by Durham and the St. Clair Saints at 1.30 here at Kinsman Civic Memorial Stadium in Oshawa. Any final thoughts, Jake? Yeah, no, this was uh, another good game. This is, uh, you know what, we had a bit of a pitching duel for a little bit in game one, and this one we just had a, an offensive burst. So, you know, we got a little bit of everything today. It's uh, it's going to be a great term. I'm looking forward to it. Well, we'll uh, let you go for the evening here. I'm glad you could join us here on the live stream from Kinsman Civic Memorial Stadium again. It's the